Good afternoon, everybody. This is Karen Newman, and this is the Saturday Human Colony Hukalo webinar. Uh, it is the 27th of January, 2018. And today, as our special guest, as our guest channel, we have Wendy Wolf. She's also known as Language of Lights on Facebook and on Google Plus and on her YouTube channel. And in the room, let me just put my glasses on so I can see who we have. We have Will, we have Star, we have um, Felix, we have Elena, Christine, Barbara, and Alex, and of course, Wendy and my, myself, Karen. And just before we start, uh, this is Human Colony. If you would like to become a member of Human Colony and follow everything that we do, we have several Facebook groups, but you can go to hucolo.org and then you can sign up and register and you can find out all the things that are going on. In just one week is the Ascension Workshop in Sedona, Arizona, February 1st through 6th. I think that there's still time to sign up if you feel really drawn to go there, both Jim and Max will be there teaching, doing galactic Reiki, uh, being taught by uh, our favorite uh, E.T. Takur. And then there's a lot of other classes like on telepathy and uh, uh, learning to channel. So there'll be a lot of really nice activities. And if you want to, you can find out about it on hukalo.org. So, Wendy, welcome. Hi, everybody. <laughs> why don't you just be for the people that have never seen you and don't know you, why don't you just give a quick introduction as to yeah. who you are and what you talk about? And then I'll be I here. Watching. Yeah, I um, I first want to say hello. Thank you all for being here. It's it's funny because if anybody watches my videos, the very first thing I say, so it's hard for me not to say that. Uh, good day, good love, and good light, way showers and illuminators, and thank you for being with me once again <laughs> as we share these infinite <laughs> languages of lights. And so that's kind of, um, it just sort of happened that way. So I want to start just really briefly, and yeah, um, I had to take a, a, to take a look back because the very, very first Human Colony webinar I actually spoke at was back in i believe it was like june or july of 2015. so i as La and karen um have been founding members of human colony and i i was trying to remember this morning exactly when i came in because it was I, it was hard for me to remember i started speaking galactic languages right around 2014 i think it was so it was i had come in before that and so I was trying to remember, I came in right around the same time Roxanne Swainhart did. So yeah, it gives everybody a little bit of an idea. How long has that been for you, for you Karen? Well, I came in, Roxanne was in, involved in the, uh, when we were doing the language gyms. That's when I came in. Yes, me too. That's when I came in. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So we all sort of came in at the same time. So, and to this day, in the background of Human Colony, I've always been like, we had welcome committees and we, so anytime somebody came in, we had groups, we had uh, meditations, we had hangouts, we did language gyms, meaning, uh, Sabrina would call them language gym, G-Y-M, meaning we would come and play with light languages. That's really what it was all about. And so prior to me coming in and finding Human Colony, and I will say, Okay, when I very first started waking up, maybe around, well, I've always sort of been awake all my life. I've been kind of telepathic, empathic, psychic all my life. I, I, it runs in my family. I had a, a psychic aunt. She was a tarot card reader. She was a channel. Um, she had channeled some of our relatives that had passed. So um, my, my family always kind of knew that I was sort of like, angels and connected to the angels and i've always always believed in life off life off the earth that we could not possibly be alone that that i was connect and somehow i always felt like connected to or drawn to i should say obviously the stars the sun astrology um uh, metaphysics anything magic um but i wasn't in the not I wasn't really into the fairy thing. I, I, my life was very serious as a kid. I had to be very serious. And so I laugh about that a lot. <laughs> that connection to serious. You went backwards. Um, <laughs> you started yeah, off serious so, and got sillier. 
Yes, <laughs> exactly. I was a very serious child. I had a really, it was a tough, you know, tough, I say tough, but it was just dysfunctional childhood, that kind of thing. So I had to be grown up really early. So when I think back now, I realize everything was about now. Everything. It, it, I mean, the dysfunction, the going through the 12 step program with my family. You know, I was the AA, Alateen. I've talked about this before a little bit. I mean, my mom was the AA. I was Al Anon, Alateen. So as a kid, I came in a little bit different than, you know, I didn't have any real. My mom was Lutheran, but I didn't really have a religious background, although she she tried. <laughs> she really tried. <laughs> um, but it just wasn't for me. I just. They couldn't answer my questions. And so, so I always felt different than everybody else. I felt very alone. I was very shy. And so, but growing up, I had this interest in like um, the pyramids, archaeology, Greek mythology, um, angels, spirits, magic. So all of this stuff was like swirling around as I was growing up. And then I was, I really loved photography, got a camera when I was a kid loved taking pictures of nature and so anybody who knows <laughs> boy i love taking pictures of nature so it sort of morphed i think a little bit from that too i've always sang in the choir um and we were joking about that right as we came on on the air that um karen was a singer um and dancer in, in her other life <laughs> um and so i realized that all of these things were sort of like melding together to you know prime me if you will or, or what, what have you so then I started getting interested, really interested in astrology. And then I started getting super interested in my dreams, in analyzing my dreams. And I started buying dream books. And like, then it became a thing every morning that it was so important for me to wake up and take that, to not let that space of time get away from me, from dream state to where I would seriously get up, you know, go to the bathroom, get my coffee, and sit down and sit and try to remember all of my dreams. It almost became like an obsession. It was as if I knew somehow that was gonna connect me to something, that dreaming and that the, the things that was happening to me. And then of course, growing up in the times that I grew up and we're talking the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. So, I mean, we're talking about all, I, I mean, I was at the birth of the computers, I was the first one to use computers. I, in my family and, and cell phones and in my companies, and I was always in service oriented industries, if you will, um, upper management, middle upper management, um, but never really happy. There was just, nobody thought like I did. I couldn't talk to anybody, not really. For me, going through life felt like, like I was talking to everybody on a surface that was just so, I don't know, not maybe like phony. And then of course being, you know, a female in the business world, you got to do the, the stuff and the makeup and the shoes and the hair and the clothes. And it was just this yuck, you know, but you did it. And, and it was very thick back then. It was very dense back then. Things were okay back then that are not okay. And we're finding that out now, aren't we ladies? <laughs> that the, the rise of the, the divine feminine is saying, no, the time is time for equality. So I've always known this as a kid. I've talked about this many times in my videos about being a kid in the 60s and the Vietnam War and not understanding any of this and why was this happening and, and talking about um, then the age of Aquarius, the song. And, and I've said this many times, it's something happened to me. I realized there was something, there was a connection there. Now, when I heard that song, it was when it first came out in 1969 or whatever. So there you go. If anybody wants to know how old I am, <laughs> I'll let you do that. Well, just to um, tell you, I did the 25th anniversary tour of, of the musical Hair. I was in there. <laughs> you know, I'm so glad you said that, Karen, because you know what? As odd as it was, as a kid, yeah. I my mom, and my mom was a young mom. And so she listened to that music. I grew up on you know, the, 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 the rock, the soft rock, and she had, they went to the play hair. And I'm really glad you brought this up. See, this is how this happens because this is part of my awakening and my best friend and hair and 
Jesus Christ superstar. So you made me think about that because that that was a link. Funny thing is, is her last name was Mitchell, which I found was really funny because when I met Will <laughs> and then the name William. So anyway, that, that was kind of another side thing. But she actually, I, I actually memorized every song on the album, album, we're talking vinyls here, guys, album hair. And it was a play and it was very up and coming. It was, there was nudity. It was, I mean, how would you, it, you know, it would, how would you even explain hair? <laughs> you know, I was even too young to even understand it, but yet the play and it was very up and coming. It had a voice. Oh, yes. It was, and so it, I was, explain, you know, I was, oh, I got a voice in the background here. Who's me? I just had to, uh, sorry, Dev, I had to mute you. When you come in the room, you, everyone's welcome in the room, but mute yourself because if not, it causes a feedback loop of epic proportion, like the world has <laughs> never seen. <laughs> okay. So that sort of led up to all of, all of this happening for me. And then I got really, and I always wanted to be in nature as a kid. I could not stand being in school. I understood even as a kid, when I was six years old, I thought, oh my God, I'm doomed to this, this 3D reality. I swear to you, I remember the day I stood there looking at, waiting for the school bus. When I, and because my mom was like, she was like, you need to go to school. I can't answer your esoteric questions, you know? And so like they could, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I found that real quick, even in kindergarten. I'm like, you people don't have a clue. I know what's going on, but you don't. <laughs> so as, as I was getting older and going through all of this, I started speaking in open, um, like open meetings for Alateen and Al-Anon and saying, speaking my story. And my mom would speak hers at the same time and at the time. So it was very interesting because I thought, I, I really believe even back then, and, and as an Alateen and Al-Anon, people would come to me all the time with, you know, their, their problems and their, and we became, you know, you become this, this family. And so, because you, you, you connect on a way because you understand what they're going through. You, you, so I, I actually learned empathy, I think, in, in being in that community. And what I realized too is, is I would speak in these open meetings. Now, mind you guys, I was only like, God, it was maybe 15, 16. I mean, I was young. And so people would be just jaw dropping because honest to God, I would get up there and we'd speak at these open meetings and I was absolutely petrified. And yet it was as if, as soon as I got to the podium and I would even have notes and bullet points, but as soon as I started speaking, I never even looked at my notes. There would be things that I had wanted to say that I would, at the end of the night, I'd be like, Oh, I never even talked about that. And it was so important to me. And they were like, no, you said, what you needed to say for whom needed to hear it. I honestly could not remember what I was saying at the end of the night. I'd be like, I could not remember what I even talked about and people would be weeping. And I'd be like, so it was a very, it was kind of an extraordinary, but I was so shy. I was still really shy. So because we moved around a lot when I was a kid, I went to like 10 schools till I went to high school. And so I was always the oddball out and boy, I was the oddball. So I was always the stranger. I was always alone. I would get lost all the time coming home because we moved all the time. So I was scared all the time. I was lost all the time. I was afraid all the time. But then I got introduced to my aunt who was the clairvoyant and we moved in with her when my parents were divorced when I was six and something happened. She she knew she knew there was something in me but even though i didn't understand and now i get it and so when she when my mom told me about the experience later on which i only found this out a little while ago a couple of years ago that my that my aunt channeled my mother's brother who had died as a, as a young man um and so very interesting how that happened too because he's one of my guys and so that that was that's a whole nother interesting thing that i wanted to reiterate too that you know, these, these people that, that come and leave in through our lives and we even, they are, sometimes they are our guys. And I know he's my, his name's Charlie, he's my, my uncle Charlie. And he, they died young. He was only like 21. They got married and a month later, he and his wife were killed in a car accident together. So very traumatic for the family. So as you can see, this sort of like 
kind of opened up a door for, I think, everybody, because what a tragic thing to happen, you know, <clears throat> one month you're at their wedding and the next year at their funeral together. So very interesting how that happened. And then she ended up channeling them, which later my mom told me the story and it wasn't until then. And I told my mom at that time, I do that. And this was only a few years ago, but she still doesn't know about the light languages. So as I was waking up, I started getting interested in astrology and somebody introduced me to the book, The Secret. I also read The Celestine Prophecy. I was interested all my life in things like the television, the old TV shows, anything, Mark and Mindy, anything uh, bewitched, um, I dream a genie. I mean, uh, talking to the animals. When I grew up and maybe, and I'm dating myself, but maybe um, you might remember some of these a little bit, Karen, is like there was shows sure like- date me too. <laughs> Flipper was about talking to a dolphin. You guys, I would cry when I would, it would be like, cause I knew, why can't I do this? I know I can do this. There was a show called The Gentle Ben about a kid who was a friend with a big giant brown bear. Not kidding. You know, so it was like this connection with the animals. It was like something I knew, this power inside me that I had that I, it was like, I couldn't get at it though. And I wanted to know how do I get at that? How do I... And then people started talking about breathing and meditation. And I'd be like, well, well, how does that work? You know, I'm like, how does it, how does breathing attach, you know, how do you connect to something out there, what we perceive is out there by breathing? And then I started reading these books and I started understanding a little bit more. And then I read The Secret. And then I found other, started, things started happening to me. I would start dreaming about symbols and I would start dreaming about like sacred geometry. Like I would dream in shapes and I would wake up seeing triangles, cubes, shapes. I would start to, during the middle of the day, I'd be working and all of a sudden I would feel like I, I don't know, like I don't, like I disappeared. Um, I started hearing words, geometric uh, words like tesseract and, and I'd be like, and I would look it up. I remember back a little, if I zoom back a little bit, I remember back in 1987, I think it was, I had one of those flip a day calendars and it came across the day, the, the word ubiquitous. And I was like, I had never heard the word in my life. As soon as I read it, it was something, I was like, okay, what was that about? It was like, I took a deep breath in and it was like, okay, what was that? I was like, and I heard it in my mind. They said, you are ubiquitous. You exist everywhere all at once all the, and i don't know what happened but that's what happened and so and i was in the very now this was back at the very beginning of the computer industry there were no pcs yet nothing like that i was programming in unix i had to learn how to read and like write like um binary and i had to learn how to read programming language and so i was introduced to a lot of interesting things that now i understand every bit of it was a trigger for me it was a, a synapsis happening that, so, and I even had to laugh about all the company names, which I'm not going to say, but every single one of my company names that I worked for in every one of the industries had something to do with even the name. I have to laugh now when I look at the synchronicities of what we do on a higher level and how I, I, I always knew innately every single thing was connected, that I was here to somehow to bring harmony Everyone would come to me when, even my parents, my mom was married several times and very dysfunctional situation again. So, but I would actually be, I would end up being the, 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 the counselor. I was like 13, 14, 15. This went on until I left home, mind you. So I was always, I'd be sitting there at the kitchen table between my parents, you know, and my step, and I'd be like trying to play you know, marriage counselor. What the hell did I know about marriage? But it was as if, no, it was as if I would talk and talk and talk. And then I, I wouldn't even remember what I would say. And I would be so exhausted and I'd be like, and so it was a very, it was just, when I think back now, I realize we're always channeling, <laughs> you know, it's just, a, it, it's to what frequency and what, what, What's your mission? What's your theme? What did you come here to explore? And then I realized that astrology had a lot to do with that. What we choose in our astrology is what we want, what themes we want to explore in this life. Because we do this a million, billion, billion, and infinite times if we choose to. 
so we can keep choosing different themes, if we will, to explore every time we come. So we get to be lots of different signs that are attached to the planet. So then I started wondering, well, how is how is astrology attached to the planets, and how what does that got to do with me, and what does that got to do with aliens? <laughs> so now I started thinking about all that. Okay, and then I grew up with Doctor Who. Um, I was there, guys, when the first Star Wars came out. <laughs> um, my husband worked in the theater at the time. Um, and so, you know, Star Trek. I grew up on Star Trek. I mean, so all of this stuff was all mixing. It was all, every, it's all the people were also starting to have awareness and awakening. Yeah. It, it triggered, exactly. I, I guess, the entire generation or a huge generation of people to start looking at stuff. Well, and yeah. then look at, okay, let's talk about music for just a second. We were, I, I was talking about this the other day with David Bowie. Here was a man who knew his stellar connection. He said, I am Ziggy Stardust. This is a, a an alien persona of me. And my God, when did that come out? You know, I don't even remember what year. He, that was like, people thought he was just out there. Well, look at now. He's a genius, Michael Jackson. I mean, let's just... Robin Williams was one of the, he's one of the, the ones that I connect to a lot. Um, there's a lot of, when you begin to explore this energy, Princess Diana, for example, I connect to her a lot. Um, the, these energies, once you, and it's not just one thing, and this is another thing they wanted to talk about about the channeling too. It's all of these things. It's, it's understanding how everything's connected and how color and sound and frequency and then I, I was in the choir from when i was in fourth grade till i graduated i was from 10 years old until i graduated from high school until i was you know 17 18 and so singing was a huge part of my life and we did you know plays and dance line and stuff like that i know you could probably relate to that karen i love that the singing and the dance line and doing that kind of thing so there was something about music music did i re, you know i reacted to music differently more emotionally than anybody I ever knew. And I didn't understand why. I didn't understand why I had this emotional reaction to music that other people didn't. I didn't understand why I had this emotional reaction to television shows and movies that other people didn't. Um, I still don't, quite frankly. Um, I mentioned this to, to the other day. I said to somebody, um, I asked them, have you ever, I was trying to explain about light languages. And I said, have you ever listened to a piece of music and have been moved to tears? And she said, no. And I was I was actually kind of shocked. I don't know that I've ever heard anybody say that they've never been moved by a piece of music, you know. And so until and then I spoke light languages to her and then she cried. And I said, Well, there you go. I said, see, so your heart knows is what I told her. And so, you know, and this is all intertwined. Every single thing that that we do in our lives is a, you know, it's it's who we are. And what and what what brings us to who we are today and even if it's not something you've pursued it's something that was a part of you i've always been in the line of service to humanity of some form and believed that somehow i was connected to the stars and that i was here to somehow show everybody that the synchronicities that and this is synchronicities and 11 11 that's been a part of my life all my life i would come home from high school and i would say God, I feel out of sync with my universe today. And my mom would be like, all she would say to me was, you are weird. That was all she ever said to me. She gave me a keychain. I mentioned that before. She gave me a keychain on my first car, set of car keys that said, I like you, you're weird. <laughs> my mom. So um, it was as if I was the black sheep of the family, even though I was the bright light. And it was like, and isn't that disconcerting when you're the bright light, but nobody wants to be around you? That sucks. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh. Bad. And so I want to tell you, I, you guys, all that too. If you're experiencing that, it's a good thing because <laughs> that means you're kind of on a high vibration because nobody wants to be reminded when they're not shining their brightest, right? And that's what we're all here to show each other. So I kind of felt like all the stuff that I was doing in my life, people figure out how to get through all this crap because this wasn't all there was that. And I wasn't even, I don't mean heaven. I don't, because I didn't buy into any of that, not that way. And so, and now I'm also, it's funny because now I'm even, I, my eye starts to twitch when my third eye starts going. <laughs> I just, um, and so I, I start to feel it. It's like, 
and then you tell me yes that's how and the languages just start because it's like they just it's like they want everybody to know that they're all here and supporting us and that's what we're all doing and so when i started waking up right around 11 11 11 truly um i wrote it in a journal i also started journaling many 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 years before any of this happened and i was journaling about i would just write every day about my life and i was very perfunctory i would write the date the time the weather i mean in the, in the exact time um that was one of the things i did every morning or as or at lunchtime when i worked um faithfully i kept a journal and so as later in life when i started finding out this stuff, I was like, I felt like I was ravenous, like this, this information, I, like I was, I was a sponge, like I couldn't get it fast enough and, and I couldn't absorb it enough. And so I, when I started searching the stuff out, I found Bashar with my, the very first words I ever heard were an astrology reading and she had a little sound bit and it said, and, and it said, you create your own reality. And it was Jane Roberts channeling Seth. And it was the first words that ever made sense in my entire life. And that was probably about 20, I don't know, maybe 2010. And it actually startled me. I kind of, I kind of, kind of scared me because the voice was kind of creepy. Um, if you ever hear the, the old Jane Roberts, uh, there, it was just scared me, you know? And so I found it synchronistic too, that when I found Abraham Hicks and Abraham and Jerry, and I started listening to them when Jerry was still alive and I remember that he talked about how he had found, um, and that he told us, and then the story about the secret, how they were in it and then not in it, and how all of that, the whole thing, and how I started doing yoga. I met a girl who was a yoga instructor. Um, I, so I was slowly being introduced to this stuff. She meditated. There was other people in my life that meditated, and so I was starting to look into meditation and trying to understand it. Um, and then right around that time, I uh, had been working, you know, all, all of those years and the company, the, the, the economy just took a dive. And so, and so I was laid off from my job and then that was it. I just said enough. And so I devoted every minute I could to all of this. It was as if something happened in me. And then I found Bashar and everything changed for me everything what about yeah. Bashar changed everything for you yeah what about I, Bashar? Because it was the, because the information that I heard was the first thing that ever resonated with me that was true for me I, something clicked in me and it was everything that he every single thing that he talked about and as some of you know, you've seen my, I have a leather bound journal and my son had given it to me. And it was really funny because when he gave it to me, he said, I want you to save this for something very special. And I, that book sat on my shelf for, I don't know, a couple of years. I even put the date in there. When I start, when I first fought, saw Bashar, my very first Bashar video, I took that journal out and, and I had written something in it prior to that, uh, a dream that I had had back in, I think 2008. That I woke up and they said, you are an oracle. <laughs> I had a dream that I was with an oracle of sisters. Like, and it wasn't oh, wow. just, but there was all of these people. And they said, and I remember the dream vividly right now as if I was there standing there. And I've had many dreams on ships and all of us. I was dreaming years before I met any of you in, in Human Colony. I've dreamt of us being together, doing events, ufo conferences i mean this is how weird this is that i was dreaming that before i even met any any of you so or did or did any of this so what now i know dream is the that is our astral that's where we you know do our work <laughs> um and so as i found bashar i started i couldn't get this information fast enough i was writing i started drawing tesla coils i started drawing the the tames the time space antenna I started taking notes. I was writing because they told me, one day you're going to teach this. One day you're going to teach this. And back then, the Shark Communication, there was a little, a lot of people had a lot of private stuff out there about the Shark, and they were putting them out there. Slowly but surely, they started pulling them. I mean, 
it was to the point I couldn't eat it fast enough because I would watch a video, take notes because I knew the next day that video was going to be gone. And sure enough, it was gone. Um, I, I was, it was, it was, I was like an insane person. I, it was, I was obsessed with this information. I could not get enough. And then I started, and then, so you know how it is, you start searching things on YouTube, you get the recommended stuff, and all of a sudden, stuff starts coming. I find Roxy. <laughs> and I exploded. I was one of her first callers on her radio show. Oh, funny. She, if you guys could hear today, talk about fangirl. Oh, my God. I was just like, I was so excited to talk to Osithius. I was beside myself. <laughs> I was, I was, so I found, I, so I started finding all these other channels and then I found Human Colony. I found Daniel Scranton. I found Wendy Kennedy, Nora Harold, Abraham Hicks, Rob Gauthier. It was as if I knew, I knew <laughs> that, and I, and then I was watching the Bashar videos and I started I would watch just the right ones. Like somebody would speak a language and I'd be like, oh my God. And I always loved languages all my life. I wanted, always wanted to travel the world, do archeological digs. I always wanted to speak languages. I was, I was obsessed with hieroglyphs. <laughs> so here we are with these, I didn't even, I don't even think I have one of my, what did I do? Anyway, you know, the hieroglyphs, how we're all writing all these star languages now. Um, I can't believe the difference today in how many people are out there doing this versus when I first started it. There was nothing out there, nobody. Well, Yvonne Perry, Jacqueline Smith, um, there was a couple people out there, um, uh, Brad Johnson. Brad Johnson was a huge part of my awakening. I was in some of his private hangouts. Um, a bunch, he was doing events back then. Uh, those entities, you know, they somehow, I just knew I was, there was something there I couldn't explain. And then when I found Jim and Human Colony and he started channeling, you know, Shell from the Shikani and it all just, it just happened. And then I started going in these language gyms and one day I just, I started channeling. I started channeling in the shower and then I started to cry. I didn't know what was really happening. It was so powerfully and emotionally intense, I couldn't even understand it, what was happening to me. And I would come in the language gym and I'd be like, something weird just happened to me. <laughs> something really weird just happened to me. And I'm all upset. And I'm not upset. It was like, it was a, because it was my heart. I felt like my heart was opening and I didn't know what was happening to me. It was this is all of a sudden, it, when they would come and I would feel them in my heart and I would just, I have to say, wow. This is so much love. I don't even know how to handle this information, this energy. And I remember being in a hangout one day and I, and I started speaking languages and they, they, and they said, we are the Elohim. And they started, and, and then we are Ileana from the Elohim. And it was just, I was like, what's the Elohim? <laughs> Who's that? So I didn't even understand what any of that was. And so, I was just as shocked as the next guy. Um, I, I didn't really understand what was happening, but I did. And then I started to understand, I'm a hybrid mom. Oh my God, I take care of these children. Oh my God, I'm speaking to these children. It was like I would wake up in the morning and I would know that I've been somewhere. I've been someplace that I was doing something different, bigger, bigger than me. Um, that I was going places and taking and, and connecting and, and even, and as hard as this is to say, it's like I was, I was having, having hybrid children. It was like, and then I started to understand my connections of how I, started, I agreed to do this even when I was young. When I began my own childbearing years in my own 3D life, I understood now. Now I even started to put the puzzle pieces together of my own hybridization agreement, if you will, that started even as I was beginning to have my own children. So isn't this interesting how it all started to connect the dots? 
and what I learned then from having private sessions with Jim and my connections to them and the Shikani and what it what it was and then like Pleiadians, Arturians, the uh so I just started to feel and hear and get messages. And then I would be so excited when Jim would translate in the, the webinars, when we all would speak languages and then he would start to translate. And I'd be like, oh God, I so wanna be able to do that. You know, I wanna be able to, to understand the information. And then I began to understand too, that light languages isn't all about translation. Um, and there's so many things that even I don't still understand, but I know what they told me. I know what I hear. I, we can be having a conversation both ways. We can be receiving information. We can be healing ourselves and other people. They've showed me how light languages almost like filters through you, like water through sand, um, like filling the spaces through you through your molecules and around your atoms and your auras, like literally, because we are not solid. You think you're solid, but you're not. You're, you're energy. You are particles of light, whether you wanna believe it or not. So, but we represent ourselves in a three den den density dimension, the fourth density, three dimensional reality so that we can make sure this feels real. Because if this experience didn't feel real, we couldn't, share it with the Akash, the level that we do and we can. And that's how I came in to all of this. And from that moment, the, the, the dam opened. So when I say, when I like, if I ask and see, I have to be careful, not be careful. Let me rephrase that. I have to be selective with the time that I choose <laughs> to invite the information because, for example, when I know I'm going to do like a, a, an event, I, I will start to ask. Okay, let me back up just a second. So in 2014, when I started speaking languages, um, I, I still didn't tell anybody in my family, nobody nobody knew so again very lonely i had all of you guys for hours and hours and hours and hours because we found each other we were like the same thing it was like we couldn't couldn't get enough of each other either because we found our soul family it was it was as if we couldn't get enough of spending time with each other and sharing our experiences and learning and we all started speaking languages and the light language gyms and we all started sharing and and had all these and amazing, amazing hangouts and experiences and the love, the love. I have never felt love before like I've ever felt in this. I was not really hugged as a child or touched. I didn't like to be touched. I, I learned how to be empathic and touched by having animals, by being in nature and by probably in Alateen and Alanon because everybody hugged everybody. So it was like, I kind of had to get used to it. And let me tell you, talk about the worst fears. I was in a, I was doing a huge speak, speak for Alanon, I think at the time. And I, a woman came up to me right at the end. People were still clapping and they, she walks right up to me to give me a hug. My braces got stuck. Brace, I had braces. <laughs> my braces got stuck on her sweater in front of the entire audience. I could not get my braces off her sweater. Now, oh my God. Your worst case freaking scenario. I was mortified. But see, these are the things that we do and create for ourselves to say, well, you know, honey, you did it. You made it through. Everybody laughed. You got on. And it was. Shit happens. So. It grooms us for what's next. You know, it's your, it, our life doesn't happen to us. It happens by us, for us, with our, with our guides <laughs> to help us because they know what our true core vibration is. They know what our theme is we want to explore. And then they, and then we get mad about the lessons and the challenges that they send us in order to become the masters 
at what it is that we need to do, right? Then we judge it, we get pissed at our wives, we say, I have a shitty life, I got this, I got this disease, I got that disease. Well, you know what, if you, if you understand you're traveling through multiple millions and billions of parallel realities, moment by moment by moment, guess what? <laughs> you get to choose whether you get to continue that one or not, right? So the, all of this stuff was like, I call it my cosmic slap in the face. You know, you just, you start to realize you don't get to blame anybody anymore. Everything happens by you for you for the most perfect and amazing reasons. Um, and so once I started to let all this go a little bit and let it go a, a little bit, one day I was in the woods walking ranger. That was another thing when I got ranger, <laughs> my dog. That changed my life. And I've had dogs all my, I've had pets on and off all my life. None of them, actually, to be honest, none, none of them ended well. Um, and so, but I had an, a, a weird a, attraction to animals. I, even as a kid, I, I, we had a dog when I was little and we had a cat when I was really little. I was maybe about four years old and the cat was in labor and was having a kitten. I think I've talked about this before. And my parents had to get me up out of bed. It was like two or three in the morning and this cat would just not, she kept wanting to come in my room to give birth on my bed. And so they finally get, got me up out of the room to sit with her and have this baby and the baby was dead when it was born and she only had one. And so that led into a whole lot of other things because my aunt that I told you that was a clairvoyant, well, she was also a foster mother. And when we lived with, lived with them, I was introduced to lots of different foster children of every shape, size, color, um, Anybody who can be a foster parent and then is just to, to care for a child, um, especially those back then in the 60s and 70s that were considered unadoptable because they were of mixed races. Um, these became my family. I, I loved these children like they were my own. And she actually ended up adopting a child that was half black, half white, and then another one that was half Puerto Rican and half um, Native American Indian because nobody else would adopt them. Now, we're still, we're talking early... 60s, 70s, you know, late 60s, early 70s. So the mindset was very, very, well, was it different? Well, not, maybe not so much, sadly. But um, so, but but it's better. <laughs> but I, so I grew up colorblind. To me, everybody was loved and I just loved everybody and didn't really matter. I mean, we had a baby that she brought in that got sick and died and she was a, a little black baby. And I was, I loved this baby so much. And I just, it broke my heart. You know, I just, it broke my heart. And I was maybe, like I said, I was only about six. So it's hard for me to understand this stuff. So I, and I, I just remember too, I used to watch dark shadows <laughs> with the fires and stuff. So then there's that side of that. <laughs> um, and the magic and the Merlin and I always loved all, loved all those ideas too. So then there's all of that. So I realized then too that because back then, if you remember, even then they called people like that hybrids. And so I find that kind of interesting how all of this came to be with all of us and talking about hybrids and hybrid children and mixed races and mixed star races. And this is the whole point is, is that isn't this our prerequisite of mixed races for us to get to be okay with that first here on earth and we can't, we, and then we wonder why we're, why they're not here because we haven't even figured it out here yet. How sad is it that I can look back and think, God dang, we really haven't come very far. <laughs> you know, when I think about it, we're fighting the same fights, right? When are we, when, when are we? When we, when we get there. <laughs> right. And so, so we'll get there this we is get the there. We're here. We're here, guys. I'm so excited to see all these new faces pop in. I just want to say hi to everybody. I'm, my heart is just expounding here because of all of these people that I've been, been able to, to come in contact with every one of these people because of light languages. I swear to God, it makes me want to cry. Um, and I have Jim and Max to thank for that, to, for, for them to go with their hearts and their guts to put all this together, to find a home for all of us. And I remember when Sarah first came into the human colony and she, she, we all came in Sarah oxidine and we all came in about the same week. And she had, she, that was how I met Sarah. She was another person that was huge in my awakening process because she got me out of my shell in a lot of ways and a lot of ways. And she was responsible for me for actually. I was in a hangout one day with her, just me and her privately. And this was a long time ago when we were hanging out for hours together. And my husband came home from work and she said, don't you dare turn off that computer. I want to meet him. <laughs> and I'm like, <gasps> you know, she's like, you don't have to tell him anything. Just say hi, <laughs> you know? And it was, it. so these are the things that led us to, led me to this. So the day I, 
I was in the forest with Ranger and I hear a voice in my head saying, we are the emissaries of the Light Collective. We are a gathering and it was like. I remember you saying that. I remember when that first came to Yeah. So then they, they talked about doing the videos and stuff, but they said, and I said, well, I can't do videos because I don't want to be on camera. And they said, you know, <laughs> just the light codes from nature and the light languages, alchemy. There's information in the sun, the moonlight, you know, and all of that. And there's information that needs to be shared and translations that will come, you know, and that kind of thing. And, and are you ready in that sort of situation? So I started doing videos. Um, I think I started channeling and I mean, starting speaking languages in August. And I think it's, and then I started my YouTube channel in July of 2015. So I just had this month, my three year anniversary on YouTube with light language uh, videos. And it's only been recently that I really started actually putting myself out there and, you know, doing one-on-one -on -one stuff and doing private sessions and things like that. I mean, it's, it's a long process, but I want to, that's one thing I want to talk about just a little bit about channeling and that and labels, you know, and all this talks about labels, doesn't it? We're so busy at the end of labeling everything that we, we even as spiritual people label we label channeling. And what I've discovered is that it's almost as if because I want to be there as part of the process, that the next wave is, which I think I've always done all my life, is conscious channeling where you're literally there are times when i don't know where they begin and i end and it becomes I, I i would share something but i don't I, i'm going to share it on the 10th but it's exactly that so yeah and, and so i'll tell I you after <laughs> there's so i can be speaking languages for example and people can listen to me and they're like oh my god you just you know you hit the galaxy all in one because you go from one to the other well i i can and so much of my connections had to do with, and I want to just touch on the Bashar thing for a moment, because when I heard Bashar say, in order for you guys to connect, all you have to do is picture the black triangle surrounded by the blue. That's the, the SSI phone number. And I thought, really? That's it? <laughs> now, when I found Human Colony, I took a look at the thing and it says, you know, would you like to apply to the colonies? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, I should do that. Well, I never did it. But I did it. From that moment on, it was done. It was a done deal because I said it. I thought it. I wanted it. I intended it, and it was done. It was just done. Then I started to understand, you know, my Pleiadian DNA and my Arcturian DNA and my Shikani DNA and all this other stuff. And you start to expand on all of this. And when he said that, though, in that video about connecting, where is it? It's right here. If you guys are, you're not. This plant right here, I bought way back then this is it's three strands you know that are interwoven so you got the 369 energy i saw this in the it's in a you know a store and i started meditating on this plant and this spiral belongs to i know you guys are going to think this is crazy but this belongs to there's a tube that goes in here and it's a rain gauge the rain gauge broke so one day I got the spirals going on. I'm thinking about the Tesla coil. I'm thinking about Bashar. I'm thinking about all this stuff. And all of a sudden I see this little spiral thing laying someplace. And I thought, hmm. I imagined my consciousness in a spiral along with these, these shooting out to the universe and saying, hi, everybody. <laughs> well, I'm here. And I would love to have a chat anytime. Anybody who's in my frequency who wants to share this information, that happened before I started speaking light languages. I started feng shuiing my house and saying, I'd like to be able to open this in my awareness. I'd like to be op I'd like to open this into my heart. I'd like to open astral travel and multidimensional awareness into I want to understand how it is that I can meditate and breathe and connect with other planets. I don't understand that. How does that work? <laughs> That's it. And I would just start listening every morning 
Then I would put my journal down and close my eyes in the dark in the morning before work and just listen. I would just, whatever word came to me. And all of a sudden, I would start to hear things. I would start to write and write and write. And it wasn't me. It was not me. So I began to understand. And it all started to flow and it all started to flow. So now, when I have when I know an event's coming or a private session and I say, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna turn on the light now. I'm gonna open the faucet. So if anybody has any information for me, I'm ready to receive it. Because if I don't, if I don't, I, I'm standing at dinner, I'm doing the shower, I may it doesn't matter where I am, if I don't, it's pouring in and pouring in and pouring in. So I, you know, so it all depends on what you want. I just wanted to connect with collectives, I guess, I guess. Um, so when I first talked to Jim and, and they even said to me, Shell from the Shikani said, you connected with us on this multi-level that it was like everybody all at once heard you. It was good. So it was kind of very validating. When I first met Max in Chicago, he moved from Rochester to Chicago. I moved from Chicago to where I am now. Max was one week away from moving to San Diego, where he is now. I had one weekend's chance to meet Max, and it just so happened there was a big yoga healing thing going on at the same time. Brooke Alyssum was there too. If anybody aren't familiar with her, she's been on the Human Colony webinar several times channeling um, the Divine Feminine. She's got her channel out there. She's now a yoga master. So, I'm not, so that weekend, I got to meet Brian, um, who was in around from the very beginning too. And so Brian was there. Um, Max was there. I got to meet Brooke and I bought a bunch of crystals that are sitting here <laughs> at that healing that day. So this was my first encounter with actually a healing room center. I walk in and the first thing that happens is, is you see nothing but crystals at the crystal shop. So right away, mm -hmm. I'm like buzzing with all this energy and I don't even, I'm like, wow, this is crazy. So I'm, I'm feeling all this crystal energy. So you walk through the crystal room and you take your shoes off. And so all of these healers, you walk into this room and there was a very small room actually, but there must've been, I don't know, maybe, hmm, maybe 30 healers in there or something. And Max was there. He was doing um, interviews with all of the healers. So he was walking around doing interviews with all the healers. And so each of the healers were there and you had 15 minute sessions with each healer. So you could go to each healer and do an, an experiment with all of their modalities. This was the very first time I had ever, ever been introduced to Reiki, receiving Reiki. So this too was new for me, this type of energy. Now I had already known Brooke, known through hangouts, I had been in hangouts with her and with Brian Sims and with, you know, Max and everything. So I was so excited to meet them. I was, again, beside myself. I was very excited. So we spent three, I think it was two or three days together. I didn't spend the night. I drove back home because I lived so close to Max at the time. So we did like three days of hangouts together. We did a Saturday webinar from Max's house. But that Friday night, when I arrived there and I met Max, when I first met Max and all these healers, I've never felt anything like that in my entire life where I had been, there was, there was singing bowls, there were gongs, there was Reiki masters, there was Oracle readers, there was tarot card readers. Um, Brooke was there doing readings. Um, and I felt something that I'd never felt before. And so I received my first Reiki treat treatment or you know if you will from a gentleman who was practicing using binaural beats with headsets while performing reiki and so he was so max was going around um interviewing all these people and all their different um, model healing modalities and all these videos are out there for you guys to watch i mean they're, they're amazing actually the all of these that i'm talking about they're there out there for you guys to see you can see the room in the videos you can see the people um, he interviewed, I think, everybody in the room. <laughs> so they're all out there for, for you all to see. Um, so um, 
2016 was it? Or yeah, wait, no, when was it? 16, I think. Wait, I gotta think about this. Yeah, he moved in 2016. So to, it was that December. Yeah, it was right. It's been almost a year and a half now. Chris, it was right before yeah. the holidays because it was cold. So December. Was December. Okay. Yeah, it was December. It was cold out because it was cold in Chicago, but it was a beautiful sunny day. We got a, actually we got a great weekend because we walked to the restaurant. We did videos from the restaurant. Um, it was so much fun. I mean, it was so much fun. I was walking on air. So I received this 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 Reiki treatment for, and I had never had Reiki before at all. So now I'm having Reiki with binaural beads. So I I mean I'm literally I come off the table and I'm like totally vibrating. I swear to God, I was like, what the hell just happened to me? I was like, ah, you know. So it wasn't, and it was only maybe a few minutes later. I can't remember how long. And Max said, "Would you like? Can, uh, can I do Reiki on you?" I was like, okay, you know, so sorry, you drink a water. See, I talk a lot. I talk really fast. Too. Well, while you're taking a drink, I'll just say something. There's something about Reiki that is so amazing for opening people up. I I, I was I studied Reiki uh, 25 years ago now. It's unbelievable to think it's so long ago. But 25 years ago. <laughs> yeah, but I will just say that that if anyone is listening that is wondering about making connection and opening up just getting those reiki attunements you know level one and two you don't have to become a reiki master but there's just something about those attunements and if you know the history of reiki um you should read about it but because it, it's designed exactly to do that it's 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 an attunement to universal energy and once you sort of open up to that Every person you listen to that has a story, a spiritual story, inevitably they'll go, oh, yeah, and I became, I studied Reiki, and then everything started, started Reiki. Yeah. It's almost yeah. like our permission slip to make it okay to, to, to make energy okay. <laughs> well, it's also the, maybe not even the permission slip, but maybe just your initiation into the energy or opening yeah, up, yeah. clearing the blocks and all that stuff, yeah. I would, anyway. I would agree wholeheartedly, because you know what, too, Karen, that, that's a good point, because you know what you guys it's about the intention even if you don't take reiki it doesn't matter and i say this because as long as you say to your heart your universe your guides i want to open myself up to universal energy the reiki and the symbols and yes absolutely is is, is huge but i haven't even taken reiki um i've been through galactic reiki one and i went through all of the queer and fire with will well, that's um, that is Reiki, and so that yes, they could the like Reiki and go through yeah. that whole. Um, but I, but I mean, as far as like saying I have you know Reiki one, two, three, four, I'm a Reiki master and a teacher. I don't have that, but yet I also know that I'm also, but I am tapped into you know that universal. You only energy. need Reiki one. That's what I'm saying. You only exactly. need Reiki one. You to, to to start to open. I mean, the to other stuff is optional. Yourself. Yeah. Yeah, and if you want to explore it, my goodness, absolutely, because it means you want to help others heal. You want to help others find their light. You want to help others discover them, 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 their own connection to universal energy. And one of the biggest things I think Will all the time for is introducing me to the Reiki principles, you know, because it breaks it down. Just for today, I will not worry, because worry puts us in the past or the future, and it takes us out of the now. You know, I, just today I will be grateful. Find one tiny thing to be grateful for. You know, we've talked about great, grateful is the seed to opening up the door to all of this. Um, I will be kind to myself and other living creatures. I will do my work honestly. When we say honestly, that means when we are denying our own gifts and abilities, you're not doing your work honestly. That's what that means. It, you know, if you're going to go out and, 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 and earn a day's pay, go earn it doing something you enjoy. Because you know what? I'm going to be perfectly honest with you guys. I spent, I started really working. You know, I didn't have a lot as a kid and stuff. And, and I, I literally took an ironing. God, I was probably nine. And I started taking an ironing. I had so many different jobs. I mean, I stuffed newspapers. I was I answered telephone calls at six o'clock in the morning every weekend for the local newspaper. 
for complaints for people who didn't get their paper. I, I mean, yeah, the, I mean, I start. I was in service. I, I was actually running an entire short order cook kitchen when I was 13, 13, who does that? <laughs> you know, I was managing an apartment building of 50 units when I was like 18 years old. So it's all, you know, and I understand all of that. Why now? Um, everything, you know, when, so when we say doing an honest day's work, it's about doing what you love because I spent all my life doing jobs and yes they groomed me for what i do, was doing now so i can never discount or devalue those experiences ever but what i'm saying is if you have a choice i was in such dis-ease because i was because i was going decade after decade after decade not doing what i loved it manifested into ugly ugly stuff i'm talking massive depression i'm talking but I was, but I never talked about it on the outside. I was the guy who was the smiling, perky, blah, 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 who commits suicide the next day and everyone goes, what? Didn't see that coming. So I've been there. I have been there. I've had t six shoulder surgeries in 10 years, which led me to holistic healing, which led me to finding out what foods are anti-inflammatory, which led me to meditation, which led me to, I don't even, you know, that's another thing I'm going to do. I'm going to do some sessions and videos on about this too. You know, the, the opium epidemic, uh, addiction epidemic is rampant in this country and not, in the, and if not in this world. So we're, we're still, we're still trying to deny and fill these holes of what we should be doing to follow our passions. And we're filling it. We're still filling it with judgment, self-denial, um, not being ourselves, um, not doing what we want to do in our lives and thinking that somehow they're doing a shitty job is going to support us even better than a, a job we love. Nonsense. This is where I start. Let me tell you, I can be channeling in one minute. There's Bashar. One minute, there's the Pleiadians. Next minute, there's the Arcturians. They're all chiming in. That's the point of conscious channeling. Once you tap in, who gives a rat's ass who's talking? <laughs> it's you're, it's you. It's higher consciousness, just like Karen said earlier. Doesn't you want to label it? So, you know, that's the one thing in my videos. I never ever wanted to say, "Hi, I'm Wendy. I'm an I'm a this and I'm a that." And I'm because then I've just now pigeonholed. I've labeled. I but yet, if somebody comes to your channel. They said, well, what are you? What do you do? Well, what do you, what, you know? So we still like need labels to tell everybody what it is that we do in the world. I'm a Reiki this, I'm a Reiki master. I'm a light language activist, activator. I'm, you know, we need to, we need to label it, but then we almost do ourselves a disservice because aren't we trying to eliminate the labeling, but yet we perpetuate the labeling. We continue to talk about integration and unity but yet we we still every single day in social media we spew separation it's like stop sharing talking concentrating anything that you don't want to see in the world you know we just don't get it what you say after i am I am sick. I have this. I, I, you know, I quit telling people about my shoulder because I, I don't, I don't want that story anymore. I don't want to tell that story anymore. And to this day, rarely am I in pain. Rarely. And when I am, I have to ask myself, okay, what's the elephant in the room? Just like we talked about yesterday in my video. What's the elephant in the room? What am I not looking at that's manifesting here? So chakras, we've talked about this many times. Chakras are, are an indicator for you. Go into your meditation and what color do you see? Oh, well, maybe that's something you need to look at. Go see what color that chakra and, and ask yourself, what is my body trying to tell myself? That's the biggest, the biggest thing they wanted me to convey today too is talk to your body, talk to your body. 
It's going to tell you what to eat, what to do, when to sleep, who to call, when to make your appointments. It's going to tell you what color to wear. It's going to tell you what you need to do in a day to, 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 to when, when Barshar said, follow your highest joy moment by moment, as far as you can take it without judgment, they're talking about, I'm loving this cup because it's so cute. Look at it. It's got a lotus flower. It's got this gorgeous, beautiful leopard. I got these cups at the dollar store because I loved them so much because they brought me, as soon as I saw them, they brought me such joy. I bought four different animals. I bought all the ones that they had in the store. Four dollars, mind you because they brought me joy. And right now, this is my highest joy because I'm gonna remind you that it's the simple pleasures of buying a cup at a dollar store that every time I look at it, it makes me so excited because now I get to connect with my Lyran family. So the day that, and that was to her telling us all too, that you all can talk to her anytime you want to. Thank you, Chikur. So trust and believe. So the day that I got Reiki from Max, I, <laughs> it was a very interesting experience because I got up from the table <laughs> and I sat up and I was like, okay, so now I was still kind of, I was still coming off the first Reiki. <laughs> so then I'm, I'm, and then I'm now, mind you too, I'm in the middle of this room, with all of these healers, all of these healers, you can sort of hear the, the lull in the room of all the healers and the, the, the sounds and the chimes and the music playing, the soft ambient music playing, everybody's got their little things going on. And now, mind you, nobody's private. This is one big open room. So you can sort of hear everybody's little stations. And so I sit up on the table. And Max says to me, you are so alien. <laughs> he says, I don't think I've ever met anybody so alien as you. He says, I couldn't even perform Reiki on you because it was as if I was getting reverse Reiki back and I couldn't even, he says, every time I tried to give it, it was as if I was receiving it back. And he said it was so strong and it was so alien. He says, I couldn't even he, like, <laughs> so imagine that, imagine hearing that the first time you're in a healer's room and you're the first time you receive Reiki. And I thought, well, what do I make of that? Hmm. <laughs> so it's all about your intention. So my intention as a kid of wanting to travel the world, my intention as a kid of wanting to speak a billion languages, of wanting to connect with everybody. If anybody who knows the old television show, Love Boat, there was everybody, when the show was on, everybody used to call me that. Julie, the cruise director, because I like to bring people together. I like to coordinate fun and bring to show everybody that everything's connected, you matter, you're equal to everybody else. You can do anything you put your mind to because that was not something I was told as a kid. I was never told I could do that. Actually, I was told the opposite. So the more I was told what I couldn't do, the more pissed I got and said, you wanna bet? <laughs> you wanna bet? <laughs> so, I became very stubborn and I, and, and that's what got me through what everything, absolutely every job, every, you know, every time that I could have taken something a particular direction, I realized that I can turn this into a lesson to make me stronger. I can turn it into sloppy drama if I want, but is that really what I want? So I see it's getting dark in here. It's pouring rain here now, by the way. Um, so if it gets too dark, just let me know. I'll turn on the light. Um, so, you should go ahead and turn on the light before, because okay. we're, we've are we got only about 45 minutes left. So okay. I don't know if you want to do yeah. some light language stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I do. I want to get into that. And um, actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to, I'm going to step up and turn up. I'm going to turn on the light for just a moment. And yeah, that's a good idea. Because it's getting dark there. 
I'll be right you, there. You, and, you were in a bright room a moment ago. <laughs> and actually, I didn't do that at the beginning, which I really wanted to do, was um, to invite people to speak languages. Um, I'm going to turn on the light and um, right now, if anybody wants to chime in, I'm actually going to take a, just a, like a 30 second break for here. We'll and, wait for um, you to turn on the light so that. While Wendy is turning on the light, if you, <laughs> just kidding. If, if anyone has any questions or speaking light language or speaks light languages, I think this is going to be a moment where you'll be able to do something. Or we are enjoying the silence. Yeah, just enjoy the silence and, uh, Wendy will be right back. 30 seconds. I think her lights are outside, so she's going to have to uh, go out there and get it. But do you speak You speak a light language, don't you, Johannes, or not? Oh, who's there? Oh, I guess not. Yeah, I'm speaking. Yeah. yeah. You, you, who, speaks, who, who in the room does speak a light language? And can, um, Joanna, can you, uh, can you turn your camera off, please? Yes. Thank you. I think everyone speaks languages. Uh, well, that's not, I don't know some that of us does. have tried, but Christine asks, "How does one speak?" I would say you just start. You just start saying what what comes to your mind without hesitating. Is it going yeah, to be seen fine. or not? Thank you. And that's okay, one thing. Yeah, I want to answer that really quick. How do you speak light languages? And you know, be around them. Um, that, that, that is, listen to them. I, oh, you know, that's another thing I wanted to mention to you guys too. When I very first started this, that's the very first thing I started doing when I started hearing light languages, I started looking them up online to see all of the other people who do it. And back then there weren't that many, but it was, I was being activated. Vanessa Lamorte, she was, I actually, we were just talking about her yesterday because she just put out another video and she's one of the very first people that when I first started listening to her, Daniel Scranton spoke languages, um, so I would listen to them. Uh, Wendy Kennedy was one of the very first triggers for me because she was not only speaking light languages, she was writing them. So that's another trigger. If you want to begin to speak light languages, start taking notes, start listening to your dreams, start breathing. Um, they talked to me a little bit today about breathing and so, so here, for example, I mean, these are, this is, this is one of the very first, actually, this was one of the very first ones I ever wrote, you know, some of the languages. So doodle, um, look at stuff online, listen to people doing light languages, um, find them on YouTube, listen to the sound, you know, if you, you can, you know, if you can find recordings of them, these are very, these are activating, these are activations from our star families. These are activations that if we're, so many of us now on Facebook, um, Guillermo Bastos, he's, he does a lot of written light languages on Facebook and he and I are gonna start doing a lot of light language hangouts um, coming up because we wanna get everybody involved with this stuff. Your written light languages, your, bring your musical instruments, bring your voices, um, this is a coming together. This really is a gathering of galactic energy. And now you can find this stuff all over Facebook. There must be, I'll probably, there's probably right now at least 10 light language groups that I know of even on Facebook right now. There's a few people like Yvonne Perry who've been doing this for a long time, which synchronistically, you guys, I moved from Chicago to Tennessee and I'm less than two hours away from Yvonne Perry, who has been doing this professionally. And I, when I say professionally, I mean, she's written books. She does lots and lots of uh, events. She does retreats. She's got CDs. Um, she's been doing this professionally for many, many years. And so here, my guides bring me right here. And then I start to meet all of these people all over the world. So I meet Guillermo, who lives in Portugal. Well, then several well, gosh, how long has it been now? 
I think, how long has it been, Joanna? I met Joanna a couple of years ago in a, in a light, in a, a human colony webinar. She was only in here for a few minutes. I only saw her for a few minutes, saw her face, saw her sign languages. Yeah. I fell in love. It was like, I knew right away she and I were connected. We were going to work together, that she was going to do great things for the world. Yeah. So bringing these people together. And now they're talking to each other. Yeah, Elisa. Now she's going to be doing this in her, this is going to be her life's work now. And she's an engineer by trade. I'm sorry to, you know, but so <laughs> it doesn't get better than that. So I spent all my life doing things I didn't love. Don't think for a moment that what you love can't support you. If what you don't love does, what makes you think what you do love won't? And that's the big message. How many times is Bashar said it, and Abraham said it. So first I want to see, is there any questions or comments? Because I, what I want to do is, this is about all of this. It's about channeling. It's about light language. It's about life. It's about, you know, I've, I mean, I'm still not out there to my whole family. My husband and his brother and his wife are the only people that know. My children still don't know. My children are grown men. <laughs> um, so my my it, it's like they it's like it's like i haven't even gotten myself over that authenticity you know hump myself of saying you know the light the light you know that i speak these languages and i'm talking to ets and you know be, i just haven't quite caught but you know what whose need is that though is it my need for them to accept me or well, it, it also just depends, you know, there, there was a time not so long ago where it just wasn't the time to come out with this stuff because it would cause more problems than it would cause opportunity. And you have to know your audience and you have to sort of be discerning for your own, you know, for your own safety and exactly. well-being and all the thing. I don't think that there's danger like there was, but in the time, you, know, if you, you don't want people to think you're a crackpot. I mean, you know. They're going to think whatever they're going to think now, but at least now these days, it's not as unheard of. Though, you know, I've had people in Holland, you know, just when they come to an event or something, they're like, oh, don't take my picture if you're going to post it on Facebook because they come oh, really? from a sort of religious community and, you know, small pocket exactly. of Holland, you know. So, and if you, if you review the comments that some people make on channelings and stuff like that, they can be, you know, very fearful people. Mm -hmm. So. Can I and I do want to yeah. mention that too, because I did move, I moved closer to what's considered in the United States, the Bible Belt, where, you know, people are very, you know, religious is, religion is their way of life here. And it, you know, it's like, I, I, it was funny. I even joked the other day, I said, you know, maybe I should go seek out a Pentecostal church just so I can meet people who speak in tongues <laughs> because that's okay here. I mean, that's okay. And that's, you know, yeah. but yet if you tell them it's, soul languages or light languages or if you tell them you're speaking to other dimensional beings oh my god you're evil it's still there's still a stigma there so the thing yeah. is is too is it's, it's focusing on what you want i mean if you want to take on the entire pentecostal church okay go for it but you could no, probably I'm actually, start, you know what i mean huh? i'm actually friends actually no no, no i'm just saying but if, you know? like you said that if you go in and say you're speaking a light language and you talk to us right. reels, they're gonna you yeah, know stir. that's a that's talk about the, the horns <laughs> yeah they they, they may want to do a, a <laughs> maybe like oh no exorcism <laughs> on you but the thing you is, is that go, girl you got to go <laughs> everybody everybody in their time will open up but when they're ready you know i wanted to say that too that you know um barbara is one of the ones i'm so glad she was able to make it hi honey she you know, this is a perfect example. One day I just happened to be out there and I do it too, you guys. I Google light languages all the time to see who else is out there that isn't, that I haven't met yet, that I haven't seen yet. And now if I see somebody out there on YouTube who's doing light languages, right away I'm on their, I'm on their comments going, hey, we should chat, you know. And some people take me up on it and some people don't. But it was, it was Barbara. I actually, that's how I found her in her light language channel was because I was, just happened to be looking for light languages and I came across her and I saw she was speaking a light language and she has this, she's got this light in her room <laughs> that it's like this angel light that she can't explain and it just keeps growing. So 
Barbara Dominic. Yeah. So you gotta go, gotta go check out her light languages too and her channel, but see, that's this, that's the point my, that I wanted to make too is like, for example, I've got, you know, my languages and it's an S on the, on the end of both languages of lights. And they, they wanted a plural for that reason, because they wanted everyone to understand that there's multiple languages um, of the light and they come through in all different ways. And so that was kind of the point of the plural, if you will. Um, but I have, uh, I mean, Facebook, there's a, uh, I actually created like a community, if you will, for light languages, for people to share their stuff there too. And there's stuff on, you know, on Google that several people have started communities for sharing light language, um, you know, written light language and so forth. So the idea is to bring everybody together and say, let's do this together. Let's share our languages. So I wanted to do that today. Um, so I wanted to start by, well, first, I want to make sure, is there any questions for about anything so far? Just to make sure everybody has a chance to ask any questions. Yeah, the Does anyone have any questions? And if not. I can't tell. Okay. Okay. I'm not, no. May I ask something? Hello. Go ahead. Sure. Usually you put a cue in the Hello. chat, just so you know. Yeah, I put you, you didn't read. Okay. Where? Uh, I'm looking. I don't see it. I see it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I will ask now. Okay. So. He did. Hey, Wendy. Love you so much. Hi, Alex. I've been feeling this huge energy related to this super blue moon eclipse that's approaching on 31st of January. Me too. So do you have any kind of information or message related to that that, would like, that you would like to share? Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that too because um, some of the hangouts, some of the events that are uh, human colony events I've done have been oddly on like the full moon, the new moon, the blue moon. So there's definitely, this is part of what's happening now. The push for all, we're all being activated on, on a level we have never been activated before. On an, uh, and, and I'm even hearing from Bashar now that word homo galacticus. We are literally becoming galactic beings who are able to have a multidimensional experience while having a three-dimensional experience. That's really never been done. Um, the fact that very many of us have been asking for and carrying more galactic DNA. Um, they're telling me right now that that is actually these events that happen, these celestial events are like the light switches, if you will, that allow these to be turned on. So when we say that these things are happening in perfect timing, you're absolutely right because it's as if like they, it's as if we all go through all these downloads and we get all this information we receive all of this stuff. We learn about our connections with each other. And then we have a celestial alignment or event that sort of puts a switch and says, okay, a little bit higher level, you guys just went on a human collective consciousness, a notch up to where you're that much closer to understanding what it is you need collectively for us to have first contact but it has to start here. And so these idea of the full moons and the blue moons, because now we've got two in the same month. So it's like, I see this 11, the two, and you know me and my 11s. So it's the 11 portal, this, the 11 year, the 2018 equaling 11 is the idea of ushering in this is the age of Aquarius that I cried about when I heard the song that I knew the day would come when I would be a part of this time where we would understand the connection between each other, between the stars, between science, that physics and spirituality and it, it is, is one in the same. We were just discussing, if you will, uh, Alex about Tesla and about all of that and how all of that's intertwined about free energy, about equality for all human beings, that each of us, each of us now are becoming, we're, it's like we're, we're, 
how do I say this? We're falling away from all of the, the, the deep darkness, the, the heavy densities that we were attached to and, and losing the beliefs once and for all that are saying, I don't, you know, no pain, no gain, or I have to, you know, I can't live the dream that I want unless I, you know, have to work hard. And no, you're, it's in order to be healthy and raise your vibration, you have got to be doing what you love. That's what these portals are all about. So everything that we're reading about this, this blue moon, the full moons, the, the alignments of the planets, all the planets now are moving forward. And, and the whole Jupiter and Mar the alignment of Jupiter and Mars and the age of Aquarius, this, this idea of this new age of 26,000 years opening, this is it. And you guys, we wanted center stage. We wanted to be here right now for this, as Abraham says, that leading edge where you know now, you're not gonna fall, you're gonna fly now. That's the leading edge. It's knowing that now we're coming together. It's not about separation and about competition. It's about how do we alchemize this energy and bring us all together so that we find each other, find our tribe by vibrating your own true vibe and then coming together and sharing and alchemizing all of these energies, all of these light languages. So yes, that's what these portals, these full moons, these blue moons, especially this one um, in January, the one, the number one month in this 11 year. Um, and I have to laugh because even my address here in my house is 111. Um, so very interesting too that today equals three. So you've got this divine energy. I've got my, my big pyramids here. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I got my big copper pyramid here. I got it out of the box uh, um, yesterday, actually. And uh, I got this at the pyramid conference that um, I attended last year. And so that's another thing. Okay, that's, well, that's another thing. We've got elements, elementals here. So now I'm hearing again, you know, the, the idea of connecting to your ancestors and these moons, these, this moon energy. Okay, we're water, mostly water. The moon governs water. So as these celestial, especially lunar, and this is an eclipse, you guys, too. This is not only, I mean, this is not only a blue moon and a full, you know, a full moon and a blue moon. It's also a full lunar eclipse. So I'm feeling water, this water energy within us that's saying, okay, you guys are going to start the water and the electricity are you guys are going to start actually this is a whole new level of frequency that you're going to be moving into this 11 gateway this this idea of and i can't is this i can't remember which one is this if it doesn't have an animal associated i think we just came off the, the wolf moon which i think is funny since my name is wendy wolf um and yes you guys wendy wolf wl wolf i was born with that name spelled with an e <laughs> um and so, and some of you may know me under my married name, under my private page, and that's fine. You already know what that is, so that's great. But <laughs> um, when I first started, I didn't have that WL Wolf page, and I had a Harmony and Synchronicity page, but Facebook said, well, that's not really your name, so we're just going to say you can't have that page anymore. And they, 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 cut, they, they actually shut me off. So Harmony Synchronicity is still out there, but um, I, can't, I can't manage it anymore. But um, anyway, so... Again, labels, you know, let's lose our labels today. Let's open up our channeling abilities. Let's put our intentions out there to connect to every single being that you want to connect to. Let's, oh, let's, let's use this energy now because this eclipse energy and these full moon energies, they last long before and long after. So that, like, for example, this one coming up, this energy is going to usher in the next six months of whatever you put into place, whatever you're calling forth from this divine center of yours, the, 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 this connection of your body, mind, and spirit. We use these energies of these full moons to activate and initiate that galactic stuff that you want, that the light languages. Ask your guides, help me be open during these full moons, during this time. Help me utilize this powerful planetary energy in this age of Aquarius to truly open up my gifts and abilities 
for me to lose all my inhibitions and, and self-doubt and self-talk. And remember that absolutely everything I say after the words, I am, you are. So be very, very, very careful because this is a time of massive manifestations. I mean, we're talking, I don't know about you guys, but the synchronicities and the manifestations for me are happening just like that. It's like, as soon as I think it, it's there, you know? Um, and I'm talking even the simplest things, you know, where's my glasses? And it's like, you know, I can't, and it's like, I don't even, I just ask now and I walk right to them. I didn't ever was, would have seen them because they're under a pile of stuff. Start believing and asking. That's what this is all about. So take that energy of the, the full moon, this blue moon, two full moons or two, 11. So take it and think of it as this portal that you're walking through in this 2018, 11, the year, because the year 2018 equals 11. So here we are in our element, L, E, L. <laughs> We're in our element of connecting with the L, connecting with the divine source within us, connecting with that divine light and taking this blue moon energy. And now I'm thinking about blue and Sirius. And today I was in purple. Today I'm in this purple violet energy, this raising of our frequencies, of bringing us to this higher level of consciousness. And so it's very significant that we seek out these um, languages, that we speak them, hear them, because they're healing, they're activating, and to use these planetary um, alignments for advancement in our own understanding, our ability to perceive and conceive new higher vibrational information that helps you navigate through the 3d so that you begin to understand how to make your life magical in a, in a way that you didn't believe you were capable of before or that you didn't think you know you're that we thought our ha our world was happening to us and not for us and by us and to realize and to walk into our power and say i make this happen you don't get to choose to make me happy or not you your my happiness can only be dependent upon me because if i'm judging my own circumstances based upon someone else's reaction or re reflection then it's it, we have to remind ourselves we are each only a reflection of each other we are just simply channeling each other's guides just as i said yesterday they said yesterday we're channeling each other's guides as we share our processes, as we share how we navigate through this stuff, as we share these languages. We are literally helping each other navigate through this mucky muck to help us raise each other. And we can only be begin with ourselves in order to raise the collective consciousness. And you going out there and saying, you need to change or you need to know what I know or I, I need to do this for you so you understand how I feel or so that you, I want you to know this love so much that I'm going to beat it into you. No, just go be, go be light. And people are going to look at you and they're going to be like, dude, how are, you know, how, how did you do that? How, why are you so in touch? How could you be so in tune with yourself? Um, and listening to our bodies for the food and the colors that we need. And the, you know, even this, I've got here, I've got my frankincense spray, you know, because just smelling it takes me to a sensory new level that, you know, we talk about frankincense and myrrh and the, the, these are gifts from Gaia, the plants, the animals, the scents, the oils, the, the flowers, the colors, the sounds, that everything is a gift from Gaia, from God, from source. But the thing is, you guys, you're creating it. You're creating this me, you're creating the earth, you're creating your version of that right now. You're creating your version of it. And this is where we, these celestial activations, help us understand that and move into our power and take control of our lives and make happen what we see in our visions and understand that whatever I say is, I am that powerful. Um, is there anybody now that would like to, would like to, like to share? share? 
Felix like, had a question, I believe. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I had a question. Can I ask a question, Wendy? Sure. So, Wendy, uh, you are you you really talking to Bashar now and then? <clears throat> You know, you know, that's a very good question. Very good the answer is yes. What I've also come to understand about the Shikani race and Bashar is that he came here to connect us. He came here to show us who we are, a part of who we are. And as many of you may know, or maybe you don't, if you've watched my videos, um, I'm extremely connected to the to what is the oversoul that created Essasani, the place of living light. Epsilon, Epiphany, and Eclipse. And what, what we have to understand is we helped create them. We named them. Bashar has said this in live events. You guys named them. There are three for a reason. Um, so I will be, I, I can actually sit and be having a conversation. And yes, I can hear him. It's a, but see, we have to understand too, a lot of times I will hear Grindel or I will hear, but I'm hearing it say in Jim's voice. Well, because that's the only thing I've got to connect to it until I come up with my own connection. So I will literally, it's as if I hear him in my head, even right now I hear, you know, I hear a sense of humor. I, I, I will share an experience with you that I had with Bashar one day because he has said, and many times people will say, yeah, can we go on your ship? And he's like, sure, you know, because he's, he's not kidding. But it's up to you to believe. So one day, got my little twisty guy here. <laughs> and I said, okay, today, Bashar, I'd like to actually take a little ride on Nexus. Nexus is his, his small ship that he resides in over Sedona. Sedona, funny how we're having this over Sedona. And Sedona is this, you know, um, a vortex portal, if you will. And unfortunately, I can't make it this year to, to that event, um, but I'm hoping to be at others. So I said one day, Bashar, I want to, I want to ride on your ship. I want to, and he's like, sure, it's, you know, that's your decision. So I actually went and, and, and I'm telling you, it wasn't within 30 seconds. I, I closed my eyes and I'm not kidding you. I was right there. I climbed on his ship. I, I had a conversation with him. We went for a ride. I I woke up. I, I, when I say I woke up, I mean this. It only lasted. I don't know. Probably. I don't know. Maybe a minute or two. Maybe a few minutes. I was weeping. I was just like, I can't believe it just happened to me. I was just like, oh my god, that was so awesome. And I mean, he. And so, did it actually happen? <laughs> it sure felt like it it sure felt real to me <laughs> um so this is what they're talking about yeah you know just because daryl's the only one who channels him them we have to understand you're not talking you know and bashar has said this a million times you're not just talking to a guy <laughs> you have to understand when you're talking to bashar you're talking to the entire shakani race all at one time and we just don't get that yet when we're talking you know and yes i'm not saying we don't identify with them with individual you know i had a guide come to me yesterday who she said her name and who she was and she's from another timeline and but she was one of my you know three-dimensional like guides you know so um or you know like a three-dimensional uh, incarnation if you will kind of situation but um so I'd have to say yes, um, because the information I can sit and actually write and write and write, and it's not me actually writing. It's I, I'm lis it's, I'm listening. That's a good way to put it. I'm actually listening. And I'm writing what they're telling me. Uh, you know, Bashar is channeled by that woman also in China or yes, Japan, Japan or something. But but that you know, in, what you said is right. Energy streams. You can tap into them and. Yeah. It's just, just like if you know someone very well, and it's almost like saying, 
I, they're not here, but I know exactly what they're going to say. Well, because you just Roxy. know their energy. You know, you know. When I, found, when I found Roxy, when I was looking for Bashar and I found Roxy channeling Bashar, she says it right in her video. And it was interesting because they were, she was being recorded and they were just in a very, you know, they were just sitting at her kitchen table and she didn't even know she was being recorded. And so, and she, you know, this is Bashar. And so even she was surprised, you know what I mean? And I think she even had a conversation with Daryl about it because she wanted to know. Okay, did this really happen? You know, Jim Charles in a human colony event has channeled Bashar and had a conversation with Daryl about it. Yes. So, you know, you, you, it's really tough because we're still trying to wrap our 3D mind around these multidimensional understandings. And yet these it's like, yes, it's an entity, but and a huge bird just landed in a tree right in front of me, you guys. It's just like, this, this is the avian collective. So there you go. I hear in my head, oh, the avian collective's here. And somebody says, well, how do you know? Well, I don't know, because that's what they just told me. <laughs> I don't know how I know. You just know. <laughs> so, so, and I can hear, like, I can even hear them. They'll say, like, I'll be in a meditation and they'll, they'll say to me, Yes, hello, this is the Ninth Pleiadian Collective, and um, there's some information that we'd like to share with you. So, you, so the emissaries of the Light Collective are kind of like, it's like you've got like this whole collective of Pleiadian energy, stream of information, there where you have beings like me, like all of us, who say, I'd like to put myself out there as being a channel -y. <laughs> And if there's some information that, can be gleaned from this collective source of stream of information that we're all putting this pool into. So when I'm hearing the, the emissaries of the light collective, it's, just, it's as if, it's really just as if you're hearing like all of their experiences and they're saying, okay, here's some information that we might be able to help you on this higher level um, to help you understand and navigate and, and lead you, lead you. Guides are to lead us. So to lead you to what is going to connect you with your highest excitement and joy and in your 3D life, what's going to make you happy, what's going to make you abundant, what relationships do you need to continue and which ones do you need to let go of, what behaviors, thoughts, all of our patterns are based upon a belief or based upon a thought that we think about a certain thing. And then we get in an, an energetic um, reaction to that with that we call an emotion, which is nothing more than energy that's moving through us that we don't understand. And so we're trying to ask ourselves, okay, well, what does that mean? What does that mean? What is this feeling? What? I don't understand this feeling. Um, it's connecting with that feeling and understand and, and learning what is that message? What is that message that I'm trying to, 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 to receive? And, and yeah, you may be guided to another channeler, but at the end of the day, you're the one who's got to munch and integrate and activate and, and decide how to act on that information and what resonates with you and what doesn't. Okay, thank you for answering. <clears throat> Does that help? I mean... Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, yes. Good. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> This maybe means that even Felix can channel, but uh, can channel Bashar if he wants. Absolutely. I mean, really, anybody. Can. It's just, nobody. You know, this is what I want to say this to you guys. Nobody can tell you who you can and can't channel. Now they can tell you who you can and can't do it online if there's some sort of a copyright situation, which is a 3D mentality and a 3D situation. But I get it. Okay, on a certain level, I get it. But it is what it is. So the point is. You can tap into anybody. If any, you know, and this was my big, biggest beef with churches is that when, when they would tell me this is the only place that you can connect to God, I'm like, my ass, who says? I don't buy that. <laughs> so it just was, I knew better. I thought, how can you tell me who, who and what I can connect to if this is, if we're all connected to everything and all that is is all that is. And, and that was the first thing that made any sense to me was you exist. You exist here and now, you exist, you always will exist. The idea that we die and don't, and just stop, is the first thing we need to get over. So death is the first thing that they want us to just get over, that death is just a 
it, it's a regeneration like Doctor Who. It's nothing more than a, you know, mo energy, your consciousness moving into a different kind of vessel um, or a different plane of, of experience. That's it. So once you exist, you always exist. You matter. You will always matter. You make a difference. Everything you do makes a difference or you just wouldn't be. You wouldn't have been. You wouldn't have been created if you weren't, if God didn't say a source or whatever you want to call it, the one light to say, go out and do great things and come back and tell me all about it. So, you know, and to, and to realize that everything is here and now, that, that in order to access everything, you have to be in the here and now. And that, you know, that everything you do, everything, what you put out is what you get back. What you think is what happens. So when you, when they say what you put out is what you get back, it's not about just how you act toward a person. It's about what you put out, what vibration, what are you thinking about? Because what you think is what you receive back from your, so he means it. They mean it in the literal sense, the literal sense. What you put out is what you receive back in your physical creation. And did you want to say something? No, I, I just I, okay. uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, Stargazer has a question. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Ray. Hey, yo. Hey, darling. Yeah, we well, can't. Yeah, yeah, something I've been seeing on the internet a lot, and Bashar has talked about this as well. Sometime, why don't you bring him through to give a different perspective of how he talks? You know, he gave us yeah. permission to do yeah. that in did. his last video. He has, and I wanted, I'm glad you said that because also uh, the videos that he put out about Epsilon Epiphany and Eclipse said the same thing. You know, you guys all, that's why they're here to, for us to attack. To, for us to connect to that energy because when you connect to that vibration you are immediately flung into this high dimensional love vibration that's so imagine it's it's unimaginable how how much love a person can feel and and just just by closing your eyes and, and tapping into this so and when he said when he said that when he very first channeled epiphany epsilon eclipse and he said the rays the light that is shining from the moonlight you are receiving light codes and um, soup, like super power love <laughs> um, vibrations being sent down through the moonlight from Ep Epsilon Epiphany and Eclipse, Eclipse through your moonlight. Now, mind you, he channeled this like four or five years ago, he said this. So I've always connected to that energy. And so absolutely, I can, I, I actually, if I, I have things written in my journal that they've asked me to share in some of my videos that I haven't even shared yet about that energy. And when I get going and I tap into their energy, I start talking just like them. I sound just like them. I'm like, even that sense of humor, even that, that quick, like, um, like, you know, kind of get with the program and stop your whining and well, how exciting of an experience. When are you going to let that go? How long are you going to tell that story? I mean, this is the kind of stuff I hear in my head. Well, how long are you going to be telling that sad story? Is that where you want to live? Is that what you want to keep receiving back? That's how Bashar talks to me. <laughs> so, you know, um, you're right. <laughs> and so there, it's an energy. It's a collective consciousness energy just like anything else. And, you know, we've, we've still narrowed it down and labeled it down to Lyrians and Pleiadians and Syrians. But you know what, you guys, there's an infinite number of planets and languages and stuff that we can't even begin to understand. And now let's talk hybrids. Let's add about, you know, come to America and listen to how many different uh, link, uh, languages you can listen to within English. It's amazing. Dialects. Exactly. So you have all these different, even people who are speaking half their language, half, you know, so the point is, is that now, okay, now you've got all these hybrid beings out there who are all these different mixtures of all these hybrid races. And each of them is bringing with them their genetic material, their, their languages. And now let's go back to the beginning of time when somebody says, well, these languages look a lot like Hebrew or Sanskrit. Well, let me tell you what, you guys, these came long before that long before that 
this was at the creation, the creation, the elements and the elementals and the Elohim and the Eli and the Eliahi. And this is where this stuff came from. This is just borrowed. This is just filtering through like water through sand. And I realize we're getting close on time. So, yeah, we've, you know, we've me got about two pocket. So, yeah, I want to, I really, really wanted to uh, um, give everybody else the opportunity to speak languages before we wrap up. So, um, if anybody needs to go, I would like to give you the opportunity first to come in and either, you know, and it doesn't have to be light languages, maybe um, a comment. A blessing, a word, um, an experience, um, a light language blessing, whatever it is, I'd like to give each person, and I'll let Karen, you know, dictate how she wants to do. It. No, you do it. You you dictate it because they're going to come in um, through you. Well, I'll do it. Actually, okay, I'm going to do it as I'm. I'm kind of go, um, in in order here. So, Alex, um, I'll start from left, my left to the right. So, Alex, um. Alex, I just met a couple of weeks ago and talk about amazing connections. So very, very interesting. The experiences that, that um, I've had, you know, just galactically and just on so many levels um, with everybody that I meet through these languages. So Go ahead, Alex. Sorry. <laughs> okay, just a second. Uh, I had this loud tone in my left ear, so someone wants yes. to talk. Yes, and you know what I wanted to tell you guys? Bashar comes to my left ear. Bashar, uh, the Essasani, I hear in my left ear, and has a very loud tone in my left ear. So you just connected to them. Yeah. <clears throat> Blessings. I think that was my Syrian warrior. <laughs> It was. Yes, that was that definitely, was I could feel it. Yeah, and I was kind of getting the impression that you were saying how how grateful and um, how grateful you were to find this uh, this Syrian warrior within you, this connection that you have to uh, to uh, how do they say that uh, to understanding even more clearly more of who you are, and only to open more doors of ex of. Uh, being open to exploring more of who I am and thanking like everybody here and all those watching and listening um, you know, that, that you have been brought to this new family. And I wanted to say to you guys that when you're speaking or, you know, languages, especially pay attention to what you're feeling, not what you're hearing. I want everybody to lose the idea that you need to hear it in words because you're going to miss your translation. And I just wanted to say that in the Kiasa, I want you to feel it in Tia because the message, what you hear, feel in your heart is what that's the real message. Yeah, strip through, you know, the Anna yeah, Barbara, thank you. I'm so happy you're here. Would you like to share your angels' blessings with us? She's muted. Um, Everyone can unmute themselves. Okay. Just... Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, Would you like to? Oh. Okay. Yes. Yes. Sure. I'd be happy to share. Let's see. I look up above. I see it on your car. And because I stand, I can look up above and view. Or above I stand. Be cold, mossy, and motorial. I can do some motor balance. Some motor balance. Can I do? Can I see it on my? Can I see it on my? I can do my can. I do feel on the balance. Feel no more. Feel more than below. I stand. I can't do the balance. All more than I stand. 
on tout le monde, on a un peu de parler, on a un peu de parler, on a un peu de parler, on a le peu de parler, on a un 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 peu de un peu de parler, Namaste. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello? Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> I, could, I, could hear, I could hear her saying, um, angels, angels, you are all angels and you all have angels and you are so beautiful and you are all so bright and you are so you are also loved and connected um, and so guided by the light of source that you are here to bring the light of this love to wash over the planet. Thank you, dear sister. Thank you. Thank you. Christine, hi. Oh, hello. She could, I just she wanted to talk. I, just, to <laughs> I have just blessed be. That's mine. <laughs> oh, she's muted. Oh. Thank you, Christine. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Yes, the Elekia Asana, the Elekia. Ellie. Hey, hey, hello everyone. I'm so happy. Yes, that's good. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, it's hard to express it uh, with words, so I will just uh, tap into my little channel. Ni harotu e hutina marana hoti pa haitere. Ni sutu karane on yot pora hatere hantu duro. Climare a tu ni ha para katu tu ari singa to rapa. Likara ta tu ne ne hono no ri ara ba no o tri kata in ne hona harete ni hona sharete ji pondi ha no kata nae ni satare ni ura te kana ha hi ala se kata ni sha ho ni sha ho ni sha ho namaste Namaste. There she is. Wendy, <laughs> she dropped off as soon as you started. I know. Uh, Hi. Your energy knocked her right offline. Uh, I was like, and it's pouring. I just sent you a message, Karen. I'm like, oh no, it's pouring rain here. I think I'm losing connection. <laughs> it's all it's right. All energy. I, I covered it. I covered it for you. <laughs> I'm like, you <laughs> We blew it out of the water, Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, it's just this vibe. It's impossible to, to keep it together. <laughs> and, I, and, you know, I love that, that we can connect across the, 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 the entire planet together. You know, and I have to remind everybody, too, that, you know, Karen's in the Netherlands. I'm here in the United States. We have people here from all over the world today and, and every day. And I'm... I'm so in love with being able to reach out and touch all of you all over the world telepathically. And I feel like I know every single one of you, even if I've never met you. So it really is magic when you understand, you know, there is no, um, you know, there, there is nothing you can't touch. Thank you, sister. Oh, you guys are awesome. Felix, fun. Would you like to say anything? Offer a blessing or words of wisdom? I don't know that he's there. Yeah, maybe not. Okay. Oh, well, Liliana, she just came in too. <laughs> Hi, Liliana. Did you want to say oh, hi? Uh, hi, beautiful. How are you? Hi, darling. I'm glad you got to come in. I just wanted to, I wasn't sure if you were able to, to come in or watch. I'm so happy you made it in. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Sa sinikia, iyon tasa ba ala kosa noto sukalake ki. Sa nilia sa topiki a ala kisha na te iyon ama. I wanted everybody, I was just feeling Liliana and I was hoping that she would come in today because I want today to be also about you guys losing your fears and inhibitions and knowing that, you know, there was a day when there was, I never in a million years would have thought I could have been here today doing this. And I want you to know that you are capable of way more than you think you are, especially you, Liliana, my God, woman. <laughs> so, you know, don't be afraid of who you are. You're so amazing and so beautiful. And I want you to you know, see your, every single one of us, we're here to show each other our own inner beauty. And I want you to know how beautiful you are and how exciting, you know, you're not shy. And don't say that. If you guys want to change something, stop saying it. If you don't want to experience that anymore, stop saying it. If you don't want to feel that pain anymore, stop talking about it. <laughs> you know, start seeing yourself doing the things you want to do pain-free living where you want being where you want speaking on camera um doing your joy building your business on um, you know, starting a family having a relationship you know see yourself doing it but bashar said see believing is what's seeing what okay. you plan is what you get back you know you can't if you don't see it first you can't get it back so okay so know how beautiful you are, Liliana. Thank you so, so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you for your wise words. I will keep in mind that. I know you will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> JD, my man, my my light language buddy, are you there? Oh, yeah, <laughs> Let's hear some languages, Bobby. <laughs> yeah. I was just putting my charger here. I don't want to die from you here. Yeah. Tia Saia ho hutu ohaia sahaia. Na oa kata a ri uusu ho shuahata. Miaho na hai hutu ho ha shuhur huata. Naya wasa shi ho sa i aru kasa i. Naya kata naya wahi. Sayuana ya wasa ka shi i. Nayo yu wana na kasi. Ariya wana sakushu wa kata. Maya kasi shiana wasaka ya. Maru wa kasi shahoya wana. Kasiya wana ya kasana ya hata ki usuru wa kata haha iya. Onyawa. Ushukuwa taka. Amoyo kusu kashana ya wa. Aru kushu na. Na kiha wa na siya wa na. Shayoyo wa kasata kahai ya na wa na kasai ya wa sa. Oru kura wa na hiya saya wa kati. Oyo wa kati awa na hiya wa sa ki. Uru kuru wa na hiya wa sa ka. Moha ha ha ha. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> I was laughing too because I just told everybody that the other day in my in my video about what muha meant and it's I love you and Lyran and it's just <laughs> what he said. Yes. Is, <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to tell you guys too. I was hearing. Okay, so. What I was 
what I was gathering from that was, is that this Corey, there's going to be, okay, now I'm getting, I got tones in both ears, you guys. So, <laughs> um, there's a pouring of galactic, and here I'm pouring, it's pouring rain out here. There's a pouring of galactic energy um, as he was explaining how um, all of our galactic DNA is being activated and empowered right now. And there's so many different races that are within us that are being um, empowered right now. And I was actually hearing uh, several different languages and dialects there, a lot of Lyran and Syrian. Um, and they said specifically too, the Syrian portal energy is huge for us right now because this, this, the Syrians were, you know, here at the beginning of these building blocks and the pyramids and this idea of all of this, of healing and energy, and as were the Pleiadians and the Lyrans and the Lemurians. And the, so you've got all of this information and energy pouring in and all of these different hybrid races. I mean, uh, all of these different galactic races activating all of this and, and this, this, you know, you and I, I heard, uh, I even heard um, the Shikani saying Atu, Atu, because Atu, a, I believe it's actually spelled H-A-T-U, Atu, Hatu, Atu means I love you in Shikani. Um, so they were kind of showing me like all of this pouring in, of uh, all of these different, you know, um, energies of the Yankee. And it's funny how it's pouring rain because they're showing me it's almost like that, like all of these raindrops, like each raindrop is like this infinite uh, galactic, galactic activation, if you will. Yeah. Thank you, Johannes. And, and, you know, Johannes is also one of the ones that we um, I've known for a long time, you know, uh, that we met early on in these, in these um, light language hangouts in human colony. And, and so, um, He's another one that have been integral in my own growth experience and languages and connecting and, and um, you know, just that, that idea of connecting with your soul families and these soul languages. He, he and I have talked a lot about this, about soul languages, that these are the languages of your oversoul, of your oversouls. They, you know, so when you talk about the oversouls, you have to understand, you know, that includes all of those you know, but over soul, we all share, <laughs> we all share it. And, and then there's all the branches, you know, so if you can think of it as like a, you know, like, you know, an embryo that just keeps, you know, growing and growing and, and, and so, um, you know, and, and cultivating itself. So thank you, Johannes. Joanna, can, are you able to speak and go on camera? Yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Well, I'm in the car. Hi, honey. I'm so glad you came. I'm so glad you came in the car. How nice of you to do that. Yes. Yeah, Misa, this is a woman who's got the magic hands, you guys. She and I met in a human colony webinar. And I I knew right away she was my soul sister, that we were together on many timelines, many lifelines, that she was going to be a healer and a teacher. And and everyone who sees her sees that she can move material and with her hands. She can actually move energy. And I want you guys to think about that too. The sounds that you make, see colors coming out of your mouth, connect with each other with these colors, with your hands. Please do speak. Nerete
Each of you are an intricate, um, an intricate design of specific frequencies that you have chosen to open portals wherever you walk, wherever you reside. And no matter where you move around the world, this is where you are being guided, where Gaia needs you, where humanity needs you. Go where you are guided. You will, you will never know how your life can change. Take yourselves around the universe by taking yourselves around the world, by taking yourselves inside your own world. God is calling you. Source is calling you. Your mother and father are calling you to come home to all that you are, to blossom and bring the light, to bring the light of the one light to the human collective consciousness to raise the frequency of a planet, to birth, to birth a new form of humanity. And form's not really the right word. See your beauty, see your perfection. You are all so bright. Shine and forget who you were. And only see what you are and what you can be. This is the time. This is the age. And thank you from Portugal. <laughs> oh my God. See, to say, oh my God, I love you so much. <laughs> oh, she, we lost her. Oh, there she was. Isn't that weird? You, oh my goodness. Woo. See what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. The the colors uh, of her video were changing instantaneously from red to yellow to green. You will see it in the recording then, and you will really? hear me when you watch it back. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but the colors when yes yes she had uh, it's amazing. You have to watch it after that. It's amazing. I mean, my hairs are like literally like tingly and standing on end. You guys, that was really crazy. There she is. Oh my God, Joanna, that was so amazing. Wow. Do you hear me? Yes. I lost battery on my internet. Now I'm oh. the internet in my phone. <laughs> That's okay. You did good. I was like, oh my gosh, that was an amazing message. Wow. See what I mean, you guys? And, you know, and we, I haven't gotten to talk to Joanna. We just reunited again after, gosh, I don't know what, about a year or two. And we, yeah. we just got to talking again the last couple of weeks. and. She's just starting. I mean, this is her going to be her new life. I mean, she's just, she's, she's, our, and I'm talking renting brick and mortar and she's, you know, starting to, you know, do this as her livelihood. And, and I'm just, I, I knew it the day we met, I just, I saw the visions, I saw it. And I'm just, I'm so excited beyond words. I'm excited. So thank you so much. I'm happy you're thank here. You, Wendy. I, the first time that I knew what, what I was doing, as I told you, I went online to see what was uh, light language. 
and I, I saw you and I knew also that we were connected. Thank you for your help. My dear You're sister. welcome. You're welcome. You. Our work has just begun. Yeah. <laughs> We only scratch the surface. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All of us. Yes. We've all begun to just scratch the surface. And there's so many more events and webinars that I want to do and, and things that I want to talk to with Karen about our bodies and nutrition and channeling. And I mean, the, the, this can go so many different directions, you guys. And it, it encompasses everything we're doing. And this is a perfect example of, a, of, a, of an individual who was so mathematical and left brain and 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 to to turn and she's i mean and i'm just sharing what she shared with me that you know to turn and, and to embrace this part of her and say this is who i am yes. this is what i'm supposed to do here well it's and where i feel joy in my life it's when i because i as i told wendy i manage a company with many employees and i never was really connected with my true self I was happy, but uh, I always felt that I was not uh, doing my life purpose. I, I was always trying to be better, trying to sell more, trying to to earn more money, always on that uh, wheel of life. But when I started um, embracing this side of me, that's when I became happier and I feel lighter and life around just for this uh, still my mind always tries to block it and uh, yes, logic. always questioning everything but um, I'm embracing and I hope everyone here does as well yes and sometimes what is the most illogical becomes the most logical thing for you and that this what's so hard for us to, to, to grasp sometimes is that it's okay to let go of all the things that you thought that you were simply to find out what you're not and then to find out what you really are. So you are just the perfect, absolute perfect example of this, you know. Inessa um, Tasha, thank you so much. You you here have bridged the the science, the metaphysical, the spiritual. And allowing us to see the science behind energy. And I thank yes. you. For that. I also want to, uh, I will get in touch with some universities because I really want to study this side of me because I'm, as you told, an engineer. And I want to study light language um, as a quantic field and so that people look at it not as as us being crazy or or something happening to us but trying to connect with the, what we are doing and i hope that i can contribute to to light la language to spread all over the world because i know everyone uh, is going to be able to speak light languages they will start remembering and um, we are only here in the beginning because we are connecting because we are going to start to activating more and more people. That's what I feel that I will be doing. And uh, and everyone here will be doing the same as well. I agree. And thank you, you and I've had this, this talk before and I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I'm so happy you wore your pyramid ring. Um, <laughs> isn't that the greatest ring, you guys? Um, so I, I agree with you and um, yeah, uh, yeah, everything that she said. <laughs> um, this, is, this is the beginning. And I think that I, the, the idea that you actually want to study this as a, you know, as a science, I think is where this is all going. And it's not just about sharing the languages and it's, it's, it's about what does this physically mean to us? You know, what is it, what does it physically mean when we see these? What happens to us physiologically? Yes. What, like, like, in Bashar's in Daryl's movie, First Contact, he can can, can I just uh, say something that's coming oh, right yeah, on ahead. my mind? Um, uh -huh. I think First Contact will be more like, um, as Joanna said, a lot of um, uh, light workers in the same time uh, opening the eyes together simultaneously to a lot of people doing it all the 
around um, a lot of parts of the earth together this would be for me the first contact not uh, a spaceship landing on the top of a mountain or something yes, we, we always are talking about star families but we are star families we yes are yes family. we are only here in this project called uh, earth or gaia <laughs> In the, in the project and we are all, all from different star families when i when i'm with the groups i sh i always channel their star families so uh, I, I already channel more than 20 light uh, light languages it's so crazy <laughs> I was amazed. Like two days ago, I was in the car, and it just started me three different languages at the, all uh, at the same time, and I was like, "Oh my God, more! <laughs> when is it going to stop?" <laughs> Never. <laughs> Amazing. Never. Anything. Always with the same energy. Always with the loving energy. Uh, I always feel amazing. I always feel energized. It's it's pure love. I'm it very, is. very, very blessed. It is. You said it. it is the pure, the language of pure love. And I don't know how else to describe it to anybody. And I'm not saying it doesn't come from, you know, other planets. That's not what I'm saying. It just, it, it's as if it circumvents. It's as if it's, be, it's as if it's the language before language ever started. Exactly. Exactly. I, I, I don't know how else to say it. It just, that's how it feels for me. I, so just, thank just, you. This episode, just just this story. I had this episode because I I did my um, uh, meditation, a group meditation, and there was one man there. It was the first time he was going to meditate. So I, I thought, oh my God, he's going to hear me speaking light language. He, he's going to think everyone is crazy in this room. And I was like, my mental mental and linear thought was always thinking that. But when I stopped and everyone started sharing what happened for them during the meditation, this man that never meditated one day in his life told that he started speaking a language that he could not understand. And I was like, oh my God, this is really, no. really motivation. Yes, it was amazing. I felt so wow. blessed to be there. It was real he was he was a little bit scared or but I, think, I heard his voice in my head and i started speaking but i didn't understand that nothing that i was speaking <laughs> it was amazing and that's how it happens one day you just sort of sometimes you sort of kind of hear it in your head or you feel something in your throat or you feel some weird sensation like i could feel it in my heart chakra and i would and it'd be like up here and i'd be like <laughs> you know wanting to like let something out but i didn't know what it was and so i'd be like I, I, you know, I'd be like making these noises, and all of a sudden, it's just I, I, you know, I can't do I don't and then you just couldn't shut it off. So, um, that's kind of how it happens sometimes, you know. Um, for everyone, it's different. There is no one way. There's no one way to learn it. It's just yeah. if you want to do it, it's there. It's just yep. a matter of allowing. Just allowing. Allowing. It's exactly. not trying. It's not learning. It's just allowing. It's not even. It's just like they've always told us it's not about doing something it's about allowing something to happen not thinking it yeah letting it. opening your heart yeah exactly I it starts there, it can heart. i do it one question oh, one question um i've been channeling some dragons mm -hmm. and um even yesterday i had this i cried a lot because i felt the connection to my dragon and I felt that uh, I was so sorry for not to remember the dragon. The dragon. Um, I've been feeling my dragon energy. A lot of. Can you have. explain? Yes. Can you Is explain? It, um, you know, I'm. It's funny that you said that because a lot of people, let, like in the last two weeks, have said that to me that they've been feeling their dragon energy. Um, a lot of people have been. Um, feeling their own dragon energy so i really have to i would have to only surmise by that that this is part of what's happening is is that we're like you said you felt sad because you weren't embracing that part of you and that's what's happening we are weeping because we are embracing parts of us we never allowed ourselves to before and we're being okay with it 
we're being okay with saying, I am that I have, or, or these are my guides, or I, you know, I personally have dragon gatekeepers. I always have, um, because they make me feel safe. They make me feel like I know that nobody is going to get in and invite it. You know, that isn't of, of the highest vibration. And so it's as if I, like they have been there with me all along to say, we're here with you to stand at your gates, to support you. This is part of your divinity. And we're here to support, guide, protect, if that's what you want us to do. It's up to you what, what relationship you want. But we have to remember it's equal. They're not better. They're not less. Nobody's better or less. They're equal to you. That's what you're feeling. Y no juro tu jata pereche de que ni juro de que ni jera has juto jere de que. So what I was hearing, Joanna, was that our dragon energies are here to help us uh, breathe the fire of our own inner light. And whether it's speaking light languages or channeling or whatever um, livelihood it is that you are drawn to, that is your fire. You are to go and breathe that fire now. You, uh, they're saying you, Joanna, um, Anikia, uh, those we are here we are here to speak through these channels to assist other people in uh allowing their inner dragon to emerge that they may you know breathe their inner fire their inner life the holy fire that that that, that is deep within you because when we think of a lot of times when we think of dragon energy we think of fire and the and, and deep pits and caves and beneath the earth and flying and and so we've got this this flying and earth uh, deep uh beginnings of time energy and this this deep fire volcanic um volcanic volcanic energy just bursting out within us that we want to breathe our fire finally and say this is who i am so many of us are feeling our dragon energy and, and hearing our, our dragon selves and our gatekeepers and our dragon guides saying, it's time. It's time to fly. It's time to breathe your own inner holy fire. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo, see how powerful this stuff is, you guys. Thank you. Oh, Joanna, wow. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> okay, everybody breathe that one in. <laughs> breathe out your fire. <laughs> Woo. Yes, okay. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Our dragon guides. Gold. See, and I'm feeling. I have all these colors of dragons, so I'm seeing like gold and purple and green and blue and you know, so it's wow, yeah, crazy. <clears throat> Thank you. This is how powerful this stuff is, you guys. Raymond, stargazer, yeah, Would you like to leave us also with a blessing? Yes, I would. May those who have had lost loves pass on 
and may those who have no compassion in their lives know that they will be with them once again many have passed many will come again that is the blessing of life may they enjoy it with love and compassion and strength to help others in their time of need in their time of sorrow amen amen thank you raymond and thank you i want to say um thank you for all your guide guidance and support and Friendship, yeah, in Kiasa Tapadia and Aikia was supposed to go to Hanakolish and Nadikila, Ki and Tanzania. So, for this now, thank you. Yeah, and then you'll stop us there. William, last but certainly not least. <laughs> Are you there, Will? Would you like to offer a galactic blessing or comments or anything? Are you there to speak? Will's another one who, for a long time, didn't speak languages and was into Reiki and taught us all about Reiki and began speaking languages in his own hangouts. And now he's holding his own <laughs> light language uh, hangouts and meditations with the Aquarian fire. So if you guys are ever out there, check out Reiki with Will on his channel too. And uh, we have such an amazing time together, hanging out and doing meditations. Um, so I wanted to thank him, first of all, for his love and support and time and friendship also and all the great events that we've had and shared together and these light languages and the aquarian fire and meeting you guys in arkansas was i got to meet jim and sarah and i mean so many of you guys i got to meet and it was just an amazing experience and so it really was beyond belief perfect title <laughs> <laughs> Perfect title. Yeah, totally awesome, well, Wendy. I allow the Holy Fire to flow in through and around me in every way and everywhere and everywhere. And I set aside my ego and my personality so that I may be a clear channel. ひひきなのすそこなな <laughs> Tatarasa, see ya, Tatana, no Ushakoya. Whoosh, another ticket. Sorry, Ananari, at the Canana, Tetikishko, what does what Anania Tatarsha? And so it is. Nihis, and Anata Kushiko, Yatanana, and he took a chico as a Sikin and Otto. Namaste, my friends, no Hodishko, yes, a Sakashiki, no Noto Toshi, Yata. When did they say you got it? <laughs> Translate to Kohoshana Nanatia. I love you so much. No, what the Kohoshana Nanatia. Yeah, this is just me. This is my infinite and love and blessings for Wendy. To Kohoshaka and Nanihi is a Kohoshkoyatsa. So Hokunanaha Takaskana Hishi, Kohoya Sasaka, Chikawa Nana Hasakashia. So Kohunana Tatashiki, we as a Sukonana Atashiko, we as a son of Hotokusha. I love and honor our connection, Chikoha Sukonana Atakashiki at the toll, and for who you are and for. <laughs> 
you're walking on your path for what it is. You only bring me joy, my sister in the light. To orasana aye chikoya ta ana hisika achi chikiwi onono ta arana ana ta ti ta te shiwaya ta kashishika na uta karsha kawa ta arshiki onono ya. And so it is. Okay, I'll mute now. To kurshini na na hariti na 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 yes. Yeah, there's two of us that can never ever stop talking language. I wish I could split screens so that you could I have know. the person. That's the only thing that's so annoying about this uh, well, Google. Well, we can make it switch back and forth so whoever's talking, but it it makes it kind of weird because. Well, but the problem is if you let it switch back and forth, I was just explaining to Dawn that there's always a delay. And so the it person is. stops talking and then it switches, doesn't switch to the new person until they're halfway through their sentence. Yeah. It's kind of irritating sometimes. So we tend to turn that on and off. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know I, why, but because it'll pop back and forth. It's yeah. really inefficient. Google's in not, you know, it's it's a great tool, but it just doesn't, you know, Zoom's really nice because you get to see everybody. But yeah, that's you what know, I was just saying. I like Zoom a little better. Yeah, but. it does. It offers us, it, it, but it, you know. So anyway, well, but I agree. Um, yeah, Thank you, Will, for once again taking us to the, you know, every corner of the universe again. So the end camps are supposed to be out because really that's where we all reside. We reside in every corner of the universe. And when we say universe, you are your own universe, but you you know you have access to every single timeline, every entity, every energy, every frequency, every radio dial you want to turn to and say, hey, I want to talk to you guys. I want to talk to you guys. All you do is have to invite it and then trust and listen. In Masha Tupian. And and yes, I would um, we'll do more of these webinars and take more questions. We'll do more channeling, we'll get more information. Um, you know, from you know, guidance of uh, asking questions about how to navigate if you have a specific problem or but these I really felt like these last couple of, of webinars about languages needed to talk. I think I felt like they were telling me. We wanted to talk about what they are, how they are, why they are, um, and dispel any dispel any preconceived notions about what they are, but yet expand on what we understand of, of their capabilities, of their reasons, and the Halukayana, of their power on the Ashokare, especially when they're alchemized with Reiki. When they're alchemized with intention, when they're alchemized with healing, when they're alchemized with wanting to change physical matter um, to make the earth a better uh, place to heal, we are self healing. You know, we've talked about this before. These languages can help you heal physically, mentally, spiritually. They help you, they go through, like, like I said, the glass and the sand, the, the, the water through the sand, and they allow ourselves to. Be general by saying, help me identify what I'm not seeing. Show me what I'm what is blocking me from being my highest, truest, beautiful person in light. How do I breathe my own fire? How do I become my own dragon? So I want to thank you all today. They want to thank you all today. For opening your hearts. Because that's where it starts. Yesterday's card that we pulled over in the Oracle message was, this is a voyage of the heart. This is a journey of the heart. That is what this journey is all about. It's a, it's a journey of your galactic cells, of really inviting your your guides and really having an interaction and a conversation with them in ways you've never done before to hear them to to feel them to identify yourselves with each of yourselves for they are you some of them have only been with you a moment some have been with you from 
the moment you were conceived from source, before you became all of these ideas, before you became any of these experiences, before you went out into the world, into the multiverse to become this multidimensional threaded quilt, this beautiful piece of artwork that's sewn together by all these threads of you and me. You know, none, there isn't one that begins and one ends. So now that you know more about me and my journey and, and how I came to this, feel inspired, feel warmed, feel enlightened and enlivened, feel energized and empowered. That you are capable of more than you ever thought, that you are more than you ever knew you were. That you you have the connective tissues to literally speak to anything you desire. Come into that knowing and come into that knowledge. Know that you can speak to your body. Know that you can speak to your cells. Speak to your each individual piece of you for five minutes and ask it what it needs today to serve you and how you may serve it. Your aliasa, your vessel, your nexus. And whoever you bump into, know that it's your reflection, that what you put out is what you're receiving back, that this is your, your higher self speaking to you and showing you something. If it isn't what you like, ask, how can I change that? How can I make this feel good in some way? How may I know myself? that I may know God, that I may know the source within me, within you. As I look into your eyes, I see the windows of your soul and I see all the souls that are touching my soul. May I see and be empathetic. May I see your pain. May I see your love. May I see your unconditional love for me as I see for you. Breathe each other's breaths, look into each other's eyes, exchange the colors, exchange the love. Experience each other. While you can in this way, experience each other. And you will see your own heart. You will see your soul, your soul families. You will hear your guides more clearly. You will speak more clearly. You will articulate what you're hearing more clearly. You will discern what's right for you more clearly, more acutely. You will see what no longer resides within your home, in your house. This sacred temple of yours, you decide what gets to stay. You decide who gets to visit. You decide what you get to experience and what experiences you wish to hang on to or which you may all once and for all allow to glean and gain the information from and let go and say goodbye and I love you and I thank you. I love you. I love you for that experience. I love you. I own you. There's no more resistance. There's no more judgment. There's no more hate. There's no need for forgiveness. As we said the other night with Will, there's no need for forgiveness because you are perfect and divine. You are love. You're breathing this fire of love within you now. And when you look into the fire of the sun and the moon and the stars and the water and the air and the earth, you see the reflections of all the colors that you are. You see your souls. You see, you can speak. You are a speaker of source to and from. You are a channel of source to and from not only are you channeling but you are being channeled by other beings who are seeking your vibration and your guidance your soul your connection be the light so 
So mirando dia siang ni ada puasa tu, sampai sampai sok kore. So mian soto kira lah ni sok. So ni anda selam kira foto so mian untuk orang kira sokar sana. Ah ini ni yang orang nama ni yang untuk orang sokar buka su, mantu ahanu atu, mantu su buka hatu ma. So musha kira wahanu atu aku so. Muha suma ya shoko hao kwa sumu ya shoko lea shoko. Sani ya shoko. Thank you. We understand that we are <laughs> well over time and as I'm famous for doing. <laughs> See, like, yes, Satoshi, yes, Satoshi, so say, if I say I am, then therefore I am, so... Uh, yes, so, so I even have power over that, but I so enjoy sharing with all of you that I just, you know, my kiasa, I, my heart never ends. My heart never ends. Simia, thank you, Karen. It's been amazing. I'm so glad that we got together, we got to be together today and you hosting. And <laughs> I hope that we have more of these together. There's so many other things that I'd like to share with you and about this and about us and our bodies and nutrition and 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 just so many other um light language events, so please keep in touch. Languagesoflights.com, humancolony.org. Um, this is our soul family, our star family. Watch the videos on humancolony.org. Go back, you know, human, um, we've got the two channels. There's Human Colony and Hukulo 2 um, because we've separated the two so that we can have Hukulo 2 so we can have 25 people in our hang uh, in our hangouts. So um, there's gonna be more of us doing more stuff on, on uh, Facebook, um, these, you know, check out these light language groups out there. I'm out there on light, languages of lights, um, and on under W period L period Wolf W L Wolf um, on Facebook. Uh, so friend me, find me. The events are going to we're going to be doing lots of events. Um, if you guys have events that you'd like to do, if you'd like to share, if you guys want to co-create, if you guys want me to host it, if you want, you know, I'm happy to do this stuff because for me it's about getting this out there, the energy, about the alchemy, about telling your story, about sharing your processes, how, what, what kind of stuff do you come up with in your day? How does this, how do light languages help you? How do channeling help you? How does this stuff help you navigating your life? How does, how does it help us get better lives, better relationships, better jobs? How do we act better, move better, live better? That's what this is all about. It's about coming together, heart, body, mind, and soul, and sharing absolutely every single language of light because everything we breathe is a language of light Isha, that's what i came here that's what i think i came here to say to everybody i mean theme wise everything speaks a language of love a language of light god is light you are light how many times have we heard that so walk in the light be your light be alisha it took me a long time to get to where i am today to be able to even do this but it depends on what you want to do where do you want to shine? I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here. Karen, I'll let you close if there's any other things you want to no, add. I think we're just going to say goodbye. I think it's been wonderful. And everyone, one, thank you for sharing your light languages. It was beautiful. Languageoflights.com, is that correct? Languages of Lights. Languagesoflights.com. Check out Wendy. And we'll see you next week. Next week will be the the Ascension workshop. So they'll be yes. doing, they'll be recording uh, or they'll be transmitting live from that. So there's Yay. still time to sign up. Go to hukalo.org and you can sign up for the Ascension workshop. Thank you. Namaste, everyone. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>